All right. Welcome back to the Project Bodybuilding Podcast. And here with probably one of my bigger guests, Giles Tiger Thomas. How are you doing? Good, sir. I'm doing very well, mate. Uh, Dylan, I only just learned your name now because uh, <laughs> I've, you've just been coming up on my, my DMs as Project Bodybuilding. So you say you've been going for a year, mate. So it looks like you're doing a very, very good job. So yeah, good, good on you, mate. Good on you. Happy to support. All right. And I really, I really appreciate you coming out here. It means a lot to me. Like I said, like you said before, uh, we started. I, I've really looked up to you. I've always thought you were a very positive guy. I've always liked how you did your coverage, and uh, it really it means a lot to me that you uh, came on to a smaller podcast like this. Yeah, you're the next generation now, mate. You got to you got to I've got to pay it forward to guys like yourself. Now I'm kind of I'm not stepping out of the whole podcast media thing. I'm taking a bit of a step back for a few months whilst I concentrate on the tours and the live stream commentary. So I'm just kind of switching it up at the moment. But it's nice to see, you know, because I had people like Kevin Horton because I started off as a photographer. Mm -hmm. um, back in the mid 90s, 95. And then I became a writer and a reporter. And it, um, the magazines always like sending me because they sometimes have to send a writer and a photographer with me, they'd get everything and they get yeah. tons of other content. So it's um, I have people like Kevin Horton, Pete McGough helping me at the start. So I've always had it in my mind to kind of, you know, help people like yourself in any way that I can, you know, for, for what it's worth. All right. Well, I really appreciate that. And you, you just touched on the tours. And that's the first thing I want to start with you just got off a what was it eight day tour with uh ronnie coleman yeah it was seven yeah we had one day of traveling to slovakia uh well to to vienna uh, and we drove to slovakia um but yeah it was four in the uk two in ireland day of travel and then we finished off with a huge absolutely packed out one in um in the sorry you just uh, the, the, in, in slovakia so it was absolutely oh you bring it up sorry i didn't realize what you're doing there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was um it was absolutely incredible because i I started the tours in 2019. Um, it was called Global Muscle Pro Tours then. Mm -hmm. And I did an eight-day UK tour with Phil Heath. And um, and then as soon as that went out, obviously that, well, well, obviously, but it was a successful tour. It was very, very well received and a lot of, a lot of good buzz around it, you know. And then uh, Dan Solomon from Olympia approached me and he said, Giles, I like what you do. And I spoke to Phil. He said he had a great time. You know, it was everything was taken care of. He was well looked after. Mm -hmm. And um, he, what about we call it Olympia All-Star Tours? He basically used the Olympia athletes to sort of um, to do these tours with. And I was like, we'll help with social media backup, with coverage. So that's what I did. In 2020, I did Brandon Curry. Uh, that mm -hmm. was three countries. That was UK, Spain, and Portugal. 2022, um, I did one with... No, sorry, 2021, I did one, obviously, because COVID, that, you know, because I had several tours planned that year. Mm -hmm. In fact, the Brandon tour, literally, we did that just before COVID hit. So we were lucky to get that one in. And obviously, Brandon, that was his only tour as Mr. Olympia, because his year was kind of ruined, you know? Yeah. Uh, 2021, we, we, we switched it up. And um, uh, me and my partner, Lauren, uh, my girlfriend, she runs Buff Bombshell. She had the Buff Bombshell show on MD. We did one with Ashley Kaltwasser, and she bookended it with two shows competing. So she got first and a second. Um, that was Romania, UK, and Spain. 22, I had, I had four tours planned and I had a massive heart attack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, so that. <laughs> that kind of that kind of uh, put me out for the year, you know. Uh, and in 23, I was still mentally and physically recovering. I was a lot of complications with the medications. Mm -hmm. And then obviously when the MD thing, um, you know, sort of closed after, you know, 60 years of business, I just thought, right, I'm, I'm freed up now to work on the tours. And uh, one of the, obviously, you know, I've been friend, good friends with Ronnie for many years. I worked for him as his RCSS UK market manager for his supplement line. We've done the podcast since 2019. So, um, and Ronnie said, yeah, so it originally started off as a, like a four day UK tour. And then we added Ireland. And then I had people, all these countries coming forward saying, we want Ronnie. And um, we managed to squeeze in Slovakia for an extra day. And it was absolutely, honestly, in 29 years working in the industry, I think that was one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had. And I've had a lot. All right. So you, so you, uh, do you like doing these tours more than like the writing and the photography? Do you like really organizing these things and hitting the road or like, is it just different now or? Um, I, I think it's different because I've always liked to do a lot of different things. Because if you actually, mm. I mean, I'd probably spend 10 minutes talking about all the different roles I've had in the industry. I mean, I've competed, sure. I've judged, I've promoted, I've done writing, podcasting, you, you know, show coverage. I mean, I had my own website called UK Muscle for several years. I've, you know, I had like 11,000 members. I've worked in the supplement industry. I mean, literally everything you can think of, I've pretty much done in the industry. So, mm. Um, and I think in hindsight, because I moved down to, I moved to this house in, uh, it's kind of out in the, out in the, you know, slightly out in the countryside. I moved here in 2016 and then got set the studio up in, in, well, where I'm sat now, uh, this is the Global Muscle and the Ronnie Coleman podcast studio. 
and I set this up and um and then kind of with COVID and everything I kind of I kind of I kind of became a I was tied to the studio the editing yeah. room constant and my point is basically I don't think I got out enough mm-hmm. you know and I kind of um and I've realized actually with this Ronnie tour like I've been on absolute buzz um since the Ronnie tour because it was so nice to get out and see people that you've been speaking with online or you knew years ago or you know um because the media thing's great um um but it does kind of like it ties you to the house a little bit you know because you've always got to be so I like um so at the moment I'm really really enjoying um doing the tours because I've got I mean I don't even want to say how many I've got planned I mean if I pull them all off I mean we're gonna have I mean, it could be one a month. I mean, it's it's literally. Ronnie wants to do another one. We were in Belfast uh, in the in the morning, and he looked up at me. And he says, "Oh, he says, oh, all the um, all the payments have come in." He says, "You know, you paid before the tour's even finished." I said, "Yeah, I said I would." And he said, um, oh, "I'm impressed." He says, "Do you want to do another one in the summer?" He says, "When did?" He said, "He said, uh, when does it get?" He said, "I said, when do you want to do one, Ronnie?" He said, "When did it start getting warmer in the UK?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so I said, um, yeah, absolutely. So I've already got um, three countries lined up for that one. So, and I know I'll be turning them away, some others away as well, because Ronnie sure. was, I, I mean, I've had, I mean, I thought Ronnie would be an easy sell, but I didn't. I mean, look at that picture now there. That was in, that was in Slovakia. I mean, there was, yeah. that was at the end. And a lot of people had actually left because there was two other rooms full of people. There was a green room. There was like an eating and drinking area to, to uh-huh. the right of that. I mean, it must have been, probably closer to 300 people there you know what I mean and um and the tickets weren't cheap either you know so like that was that was the that was the hugely successful so um but anyway going back to what I was saying also um I've really bumped up the the live stream commentary because that gets you to the shows as well and um yeah. and I really you know like I used to love covering the Olympias and the Arnolds with Ron Harris and I've been all over Europe covering shows but for the moment the thing that's getting me most excited and jumping out of bed in the morning is all these live stream because the thing is um lauren comes with me some to some of these as well yeah um she'd actually be coming to more but she's actually on prep at the moment she's prepping for a she wants to get a pro card this year mm-hmm. so she just narrowly missed out in 21 at the big man weekend in spain she won a class but just missed out on the overall so yeah so at the moment um it's all all tours um uh, live stream commentary and uh, doing a little bit of stuff with Ron Harris and, and kind of stuff like this as well which I really really enjoy. So this was some um, sorry this was Slovakian TV. Um this was the biggest um Slovakian TV channel. Really? In the mor- yeah in the morning um because they wanted to because the owner Martin Kaz- Kaz- Kazak I think I got his name right. He's 28 years old and he's got seven of these, these level of gyms in Slovakia. I mean, he's, he's opened one a year. He's a real smart cookie, mm-hmm. really nice guy. Very, you know, very, very sort of meticulous and OCD about everything he does. Takes a real pride. I mean, you can see that gym. It's beautiful. It's like a, look like a showroom. Mm-hmm. So, um, and his photographer, Joseph Adult, um, he had these big pictures. There's one of Ronnie Coleman, as you can see there in the background. To the right, there was one of Dorian Yates and then there was one of Flex Wheel. And of course, they, they wanted to get Ronnie to sign it and then get an interview with um, Slovakian TV, mm-hmm. which is which is what you can see in that picture there. It was so it was so cool. It was really, really good. And how was Ronnie on the tour? I've heard you speak very highly of him. I've heard everyone speak very highly of him. You know, even though he does have medical issues, and I'm sure he gets tired fairly quickly, um, he doesn't seem to waver if there's, a, if there's a long line. He seems to be there until mm-hmm. everyone's gone. Is that is that true? Is that really what's ronnie is like he gives the same energy to the first person that he sees to the, the to the last person he sees i mean there was there was one uh, there's one of the uk ones and I'd, I'd been there before with a different athlete and uh and it's a kind of like a smaller gym a nice gym a lovely mm. people you know we had a good experience i'll always go back and uh, in a kind of smallish kind of town you know so i wasn't kind of expecting so i lent over to ronnie i said ronnie it's this is probably going to be a quieter one mate so just you know just sort of we'll make the best of it sort of thing and yeah. so we get in there and there's about six people and then there's a table over in the corner, but there's no chairs for mm-hmm. everyone to sit. And I said to the guy, I said, so what, um, why is there no chairs? And he says, oh, well, this is, um, he says, we're just doing a meet and greet. And I was like, and we were a little bit, it was only like, you know, really a few days into the tour, we were a little bit tired. I was like, oh, brilliant. I said, well, we'll probably be out of here quite quick then, you know, it won't, <laughs> it won't be like a five, six hour one, you know? Yeah. Um, so anyway, so then then 20 minutes later, the guy says, oh, okay, open the doors then. I said, what do you mean? He said to the staff, I, said, I kind of, what's going on? He said, well, have you seen outside? So I looked outside and the queue was literally down the street. I mean, it felt for like about a quarter of a mile. It was absolutely insane mm-hmm. because what they'd done, he says, 
what, what, what we've what we've done, he said, is um, he said we've sold tickets, but we're just going to do we're allowing people to pay on the door, and I don't think they expected how many people were going to show up. Sure, because I think word got out. It's a small town. And I don't think people sometimes. I think sometimes people don't believe that that person's going to show up. I mean, it happened with when I did Phil Heath. I mean, I've been talking about that tour for weeks on social media. Mm. And, you know, and, and when I posted a picture of me and him at the airport together, it just like everything just went nuts. You know, mm. it's like, it's, it's funny because people sometimes just don't think it's going to happen. I, I, don't, I don't know why, I don't know where the psychology of that works, but, um, but yeah, so that one, uh, so that meet and greet took like five hours, five hours. Wow. And, and after an after two hours, I'm like, to, I said to the guy, I said, the, the queue's not getting smaller. Why is it getting bigger? <laughs> I said, How is that possible? And he said, well, people keep showing up and paying on the door because, Ronnie's fame is just like, I mean, I've worked with Ronnie at Body Purse 2014, 2015, Feebos. You know, I've been with him at the Olympias and stuff, but I feel like in the last couple of years, he's gone to an all, I mean, just a complete other level now. Mm -hmm. I mean, Chris, sorry, just uh, there's Chris over there. I've yeah, I do want to get to that actually. So yeah, <laughs> you, were in, you were in Slovakia and that is, that's actually where Chris O is from and still lives. Is that correct? correct yeah. Okay. Correct, yeah. So Ronnie was right next to, one of the biggest freaks currently. What what did Ronnie what did Ronnie have to say about that? Uh, Ronnie, yeah, Ronnie liked him. He, he, he said he's a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, because uh, I was kind of um, he was at the dinner and stuff, but he kind of was on his phone a lot and he was popping in and out. I I, I got a chance to say hello to him briefly because mm -hmm. I like I like Chris. I um, he actually speaks better English than I was led to believe. Yeah, because I was chatting to him. Was it last year or the year before at the Prague show? at uh, the after after party at the owner's house, this mm. Chateau Castle thing. And um because I was telling him about his tan, because I said, oh yeah, you know, I'm talking about his tan. And he understood what I was saying. And that was now that was that was 22. So his English is probably better now. Yeah. But um because he's part of the the Nebia team that's connected to the EVLS uh team because they're the ones that set this up for Slovakia. Um, I think 365 Fit and Co, the gym chain, I think they're friends or sponsors or something, because originally they said, can you can you bring Ronnie to Prague? And I was like, oh, sorry, the tour's locked in now, mate. Mm -hmm. And then and then eventually, eventually he said, oh, no, and we can't negotiate it. And he said, oh, actually, we're going to Slovakia. So we'll fly into Vienna, pick you up. And then it's like a 45 minute drive. But um, so that's why that's why Chris was there. But um, I mean, Chris, I was just a, I, I love Chris. I think he's absolutely awesome. He's just a monster. Um, he's doing the Empro Classic in June, so yep. I, it's. I really. I, I mean, I haven't even looked at the uh, the other names that are you know due to appear, but I know that Crizo and Berus Tabani are going to be yeah. there, and, and I'm telling you what, that's going to be that's going to be that's going to be like Hadi and Samson, you know, that level of excitement to see those two. Well, let's actually go to Berus right now before because before I wanted to get to the Arnold Brazil, I did want to talk about a couple of things that have been. Um, making their rounds and uh mm -hmm. ruse is 11 weeks out bay ruse is 11 weeks out mm -hmm. Let's see, i think it was actually maybe maybe it was on milos's page yeah probably yeah so he did get his european visa and he'll be in dubai as well so he's not just doing the impro classic he's doing the um italy flex pro okay. weekend and then he'll be doing dubai as well at least that's the plan tentatively for now okay i know a couple other good names that are doing dubai as well Brandon Curry, uh, Nathan Diasha, and um, uh, Nick Andrew, and Nick Zilla, yeah, and, and of course, and Andrew as well. Because I was literally just speaking to Nathan about that, and I said mm -hmm. you could win that, Nathan. And he says, "Ah, oh, but Andrew Jackson there. He says he's the he's the golden boy, isn't he?" Yeah. So, uh, did you also hear that Brandon Curry is thinking about it? Uh, I didn't actually. No, I've not spoke to Brandy or Brandon for for a few weeks actually. I think but that's uh, cool. Was, that's um, cool. That's cool. It makes yeah. sense for him to do that, doesn't it? What was it? It was a muscular uh, Dennis James's podcast. And he oh, said okay. he, he's thinking Good. about it. Um, you know, he has ties to Oxygen Gym over there. You know, he goes to he goes to the Middle East, I think, for every one of his preps now. I think that's yeah. what he does. He likes to spend a lot of time here at home in the off season, but he, he, he likes to go back to Kuwait or whatever and train over there and get, you know, hands-on care around the clock. Well, so, sorry to completely change subjects now, but what do you what do you think about Samson potentially going to Kuwait? Do you think that was that kind of do you think that would be the level up he needs to like really like win the Olympia this I, year? I, I because he has everything he needs now. Yeah, you know, he doesn't need like to go to Kuwait. It it works for Brandon because he gets smaller in the off season because he yeah. likes to take downtime and be with his family. Mm -hmm. But he he likes taking those training camps, if you will, so he can you know expand more, get bigger, and be fully locked in for you know it's just 
more work in a shortened period of time versus year round work. And that works yeah. for him, obviously. But I don't I don't think that's what Samson needs. I don't think he I don't think he needs more size at all. He just needs to improve some things, you know, like the back and his condition. Yeah, I mean, not necessarily, um, not necessarily size. I mean, that, that when they, I mean, it's not. I suppose Samson has kind of got a distraction-free life. I mean, with Brandon, he's got his family, he's got children, so he's and he's a good father. He's a hands-on father, you know. Mm-hmm. And he wants to spend time with his family, but I mean, literally, when I've spoke to Brandon many, many times, I've also did the tour with him in 2020, and you know, people say, "What's the secret? What's the secret?" It's like, well, think about what Dorian Ronnie did. You know, that level of like blinkers on. You know, they're not in California. They're not, you know, checking out the girls in between sets. You know, yeah. they're in these these grungy, you know, dirty gyms. And they're just literally, sometimes they only be one in the gym. They're training hard. They're, they, they've they got no distractions, full focus. And it's just Groundhog Day, you know? Because I said to I asked Brandon, I said, Brandon, do you get like lonely or bored? Or, and he says, no, he says, he said, when I'm back in my room, he says, I'm, I'm watching podcasts. He says, I'm video calling my family. He says, and, you know, he's, he, he said, I'm, I'm okay with like boring routine. He says, I'm very, very mm-hmm. good at adapting to that. So, um, I mean, obviously when Regan did it, he couldn't handle it. He didn't like it, you know, and it's not for everyone. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, I suppose with Samson, he's, um, he's kind of in that. I mean, I've stayed at Samson's house back in 22 and it's, you know, he's got his, you know, his wife and his dog and he's got a kind of, he goes to a quiet gym, you know, sometimes when I, when I filmed him there, it was very, very quiet, you know, so he's mm-hmm. not getting bothered and there's no distraction and, you know, he's got his cars and stuff. So I suppose really there's, is it really going to be that much benefit for him going out there maybe to probably not? You're right. Yeah, I see what you're saying. To me, Kuwait is all about, you know, if you want to make a transformation, that's that's where you go because that just seems to be what they do over there. But, you know, that that kind of, you know, locked in, isolation that actually could be you know what samson needs in order to get that that condition but like you said i don't it's not i don't think it's a matter of distraction i think maybe i don't want to say it's a a thing of motivation Mm -hmm. but you know when you are around bodybuilding and other bodybuilders 24 7 to some to some people that is going to help them yeah i mean yeah, I mean, like I spoke to, who did I speak to about it? I think it was Nathan or Samson or something. And they, no, sorry, Nathan or um, or Brandon. And they said, like, there's no, like, if you're into partying, there's, there's nowhere to go and drink, apart from the gym and your apartment. There's nothing else really to do out there that, you know, you can go to a cafe and have a coffee or something or go for lunch. But, you know, they've got everything they need. You know, they've got the restaurant. They'll make all their food fresh. So all their yeah. diet food tastes nice, you know, and it's fresh and it's made for them. And you know, I mean, I've heard someone comes around the room and does their shots at like 2 p.m. And, you mm-hmm. know, so everything, you know, they'll yeah. do their, 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 you know, the pin them and stuff like that. So it's all done for them. It's kind of like it's kind of like a bodybuilder's dream. You know, I mm-hmm. mean, remember when um, Jay Cutler nearly lost the Olympia to uh, Victor Martinez in 2007? Yeah, that was because in 2008, he lost it to Dexter. It's because he got so in demand. He was kind of and he liked to make money. He was off doing all these different appearances and he wanted to, mm-hmm. you know, and unfortunately, it kind of, you know, when you're when you're traveling, you might get a session in, but it's not going to be as good as if when you're at home and you've had your nap and you, yes. you know, you might be you might be running on like you know five six hours sleep and you've rushed and maybe you're late for your meal or you haven't had your meal and you're skipping one and so um, and then the year after when Jay kind of got his title back, uh, so I'm going off a lot of tangents here. I do that. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> Sorry. All these stories start popping into my head. You know? <laughs> And he said, um, he said, you know, like um, from June onwards that year, because he really wants to get his title back. He didn't. He said no to everything. So probably lost a lot of money in terms of appearances and stuff, because, you know, you want to make make hay while the sun shines when you're Mr. Olympia. You know, I Absolutely, get that. Yeah. But he wanted to um, he did he wanted to get his Olympia title back. So he, he knew that's what he needed to do. I mean, like when Dorian was Mr. Olympia, I mean, he did like probably could probably count on one hand the amount of seminars and guest posings he did you know mm-hmm. yeah so um but um but anyway like samson now i just hope he's you know he's really he's on holiday now he's got like a road trip with this with the marlena his wife and mm-hmm. you know they got the new mclaren and he's off driving it's just and i hope now he shuts it down now to the olympia because um i mean do you think do you think samson could win it this year or i think so Mm-hmm. I think I think anyone in that current top three, actually top four, assuming Nick Walker would be in that mix, I think. <laughs> exactly what I was going to say. I think anyone can win. I think it's anyone's game. Yeah. I think that's the four guys that really – I mean, personally, I did have Hadi winning last year. Oh, but you I did? Wasn't, I wasn't shocked Derek did. I sure. wasn't shocked. I mean, I wasn't shocked. I thought – 
I mean, I was watching the live stream here with Lauren and stuff, and she said, Derek's going to win. I said, no, 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 I think Hadi's got this. I said, Hadi's, yeah. he didn't do a pose routine. His back's a little bit soft, but, you know, and he's, he's cut the, the stupid shoulders, which are, are really bugs me. But I think he's done yes. enough to hold on to the title. Um, but then when Derek won, I was like, okay, okay, fair enough. It wasn't like, you know, you know, he didn't just, you know, Hadi didn't destroy Derek. So you can understand why maybe it could have, it went that way. But um, yeah. I think with, um, I think with Samson, um, I think, I think, I think Hadi's going to win it back, you see, you know. You really think so? Let me yeah, see. Yeah, I, I think, I think Hadi's on a roll now. And, and also the one thing Hadi lacked in his physique I mean, I saw as far back as the 2017 San Marino was that readable bicep. He's got all the muscle, but for me, he lacked condition and separation in that entire pose. But at the Arnold Classic this year, he really, really sharpened it up. So for me, like that makes him very, very hard to beat this year. There you go. There you go. He never had that. Look at that readable bicep. He never had that conditioning at any of his shows before. Yeah. You know? I said, I mean, I was at the night show with Ronnie, um, mm -hmm. sat there, for, um, well, I was sat second row, Ronnie was front, front row next yeah. to Arnold. And um, I, Samson did what I hoped he was going to do, like he did when he won the Arnold Classic the year before, where he kind of really pulled it out the bag for the day after, you know, the finals. Yeah. Because at the Arnold in Columbus, um, I feel like we expected him to make that jump again from the pre-judging on day one to the finals. And I don't think he did. So mm -hmm. that's why I think it was quite a decisive win by Hadi. But um, I tell you what, he Samson really closed the gap at the finals. In fact, I, um, Ron Harris told me that um, Samson got a couple of first place votes the uh, yeah. on the UK at the finals. Yeah, um, that's good. That's good. That's exciting. That makes it more exciting for the Olympian. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I kind of think I think Derek is still in the driver's seat. I'm honestly okay. surprised Hadi's delts at the Arnold UK didn't hurt him more because for me i thought i was i always thought hottie won more 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 poses and whatnot but i thought it's one of the first things i noticed and yeah wh whether trained eye, we see it don't we with a trained eye we see it. a lot of people don't a lot of people unbelievably don't see it and it really yeah like i mean you can see the shine you can see it. i personally i don't think he's doing it anymore because in 2021 milos said that he you know if he hadn't had those those i mean his shoulders in 21 were ridiculous but his physique mm -hmm. Like Milos said, you know, if he hadn't had that, he reckons he would have won the Olympia that I year. I think so. In 22, he kind of, well, he put about 10 pound on, lost a tiny bit of condition, but the shoulders, I mean, obviously there's scar tissue there and there's stuff that even for if sure. he didn't jab it for a year, it's going to show up. Yeah. But he, um, he, he calmed it down and look what happened. He won the Olympia. I mean, when I was watching the show, I thought Samson could win and I was getting nervous. I think just as time went on, cause I'm, I'm a hottie Which fan. One? I, I thought uh, at the Arnold UK. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. because I thought the, the delts, you know, what, whether it is something or not, it's 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 the look. And I thought... You can see it, you can see it there, mate. You can see oh, it yeah. there in that video. And to be honest, I'll, I'll make a quick comment um, for you continue. <laughs> he, um, on Because at the day one, I wasn't at the show. I drove down the morning of day two. Okay. Because I had to go down and see, be with Ronnie, you know? So mm -hmm. um, on the live stream, I was watching in here that on the was it Friday night um samson's shoulders look really shiny and kind of swollen as well and he yes. had a bit of distension in the lower abs which he if you noticed it the olympia had it in his lower abs in the side tricep it really kind of that yeah. was the one pose Always where does. it really yeah one pose where it really jumped out and of course the conditioning issue but when i saw samson in the flesh on the saturday i couldn't see the shoulders looked fine mm -hmm. i wasn't my eyes weren't drawn to them because i mean people like ourselves were we're kind of drawn to the flaws, you know, because that's what we're looking yeah, for to yeah. critique, you know. And and basically, you know, you're trying to compare him with Hadi, you know, because Hadi has his own strengths and weaknesses too. Um, the lower abs were in nice and tight, so maybe he just overcarbed on the Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, and the conditioning was hard. I mean, he looked really, that's probably, I think that's probably the best condition I've seen with uh, on Samson, you know, certainly at this size anyway. What do you think? Um, I, I'm kind of partial to that prog pro in uh 2023 i don't you could speak more to that mm. than i can was was he better than prague because i can only I was, go off he, pictures i was in prague i was doing the live stream he was yeah. a lot better it was a lot better at the Arnold UK. okay um yeah. i think the olympia uh matt from muscle discord was telling me the olympia version is actually underrated and i think once you look at some better pictures i think it's one of his better packages but i, I kind of think the arnold uk is better than that and if you i'll take your word for it on the prague versus arnold uk so uh, i I wasn't at the I wasn't at the Olympia last year, mm -hmm. 
Um, but I think, uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see actually side by side if you've got, you know, um, you know, equal high resolution pictures and video mm -hmm. too. But I think, I don't know. Um, yeah, the Olympia and the Old UK, you know, finals. Um, it'd be interesting to to see which one looks better. But because um, I, I felt like um, Samson lost a little bit of fullness in the upper body for the finals at the Old UK, but he was really like the kind of condition that you want to see because you know, like his back's nice and separated and uh, and his legs, his quads were so much drier than the day before. So whatever he, him and Marlena did from day one to day two, you know, it um, they nailed it. Um, I know for day one, they didn't even carb Samson up at all for the Ireland UK. They didn't wow, do... Wow, okay, okay. Yeah, they, yeah she, they had both, I think they both came out and said they didn't do anything, or at least day yeah. one. I, I don't know what they did for day two, um, but at least for day one, they didn't do anything regarding... Carbs. I don't know if they necessarily depleted beforehand, but on the day of the show, they didn't do like a carb load or anything like yeah. that. Okay. But I mean, looking at this video, it just seems like, and this is no disrespect to Samson, it looks like it's night and day. Like with the condition of Hottie, the quality, the muscle quality, the skin quality, mm. it's just Hottie makes anybody look out of shape. Not to mention <laughs> Samson, I think probably yeah. needs a little to be a little bit sharper, but Hottie just makes so many guys look out of shape. Yeah, I just I think, though, that um, what makes it really exciting for the Olympia for me is the fact that had he really I mean, he's looked I mean, I saw him in, in his um, in 2017 at the San Marino and he, he should have beat Cedric there. He was absolutely phenomenal. It was just after he'd done the career mm -hmm. where he arguably should have beat Flex Lewis. Sure. And um, so he was and he was must have been around about I mean, Dennis James told me he was bang on 212 for that, but I don't believe that for me. He looked bigger. It was a couple of weeks later and he looked a lot bigger. So, I mean, say for argument's sake, he's 215, 216. Okay. What is he now? Like 230, 240. Yeah. Um, I, so my point is, I feel like he's kind of, what more can he realistically do with his physique? Because he made improvements. The one place I, remaining that he needed to make improvements, I felt, was in that readable, hang on, he's doing it now. The readable bicep. Is it readable? Oh, he's doing a lap spread now. Um, and because he's, as you can see, his lat spread is incredible. And he's, I mean, look at that. He never had that separation before. He's even got it back in the shoulders. So mm -hmm. good on him for making that improvement because, you know, these tiny details, you know, it could literally like come down to that one pose. Do you know what I mean? If they're yeah. undecided and they go, oh, fuck, Hadi looks, that one week pose on Hadi that, you know, Samson might have had him on, mm -hmm. he's now improved. He's, he's crispy, he's separated, you know, he's, he's dry. So, um, but what I'm trying to say is, Samson can still make more improvements and you know he's going to be improved. Yeah. So, and I think with what he did at the Isle UK, I think there's um, there's a good argument that he really, like he did close the gap, you know, quite a lot at the Isle UK at these at these night shows because at the, the Isle of Columbus, I thought it was a slam dunk for, um, for, for Hadi there. Yes. But, um, you know, in a few more months, you know, with some more improvements, so, you know, and because um, I spoke to his um, friend of his who's a training partner and well, he trains at his gym and he's, they've, been, they've been friends for years. Mm -hmm. And I said, he said, what do you think Samson needs to do then? I said, well, this, he needs to stop that. He says, right, okay, okay. And I said, the lower abs, you've got to keep it in. I says, and also just, just basically keep working on the condition. I said, if he does that, realistically, who could beat him? Who could stop him at this year's Olympia? Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. I think in terms of like physiques of all time, I was kind of with Milos when he would say, it's it's about everything, like symmetry, balance, everything. Like he may not be like, he may not check like 10 out of 10 on a certain box or whatever, but I think he's checking a lot of eight out of tens on most boxes. And to me, I think yeah. he does kind of have the most well-rounded physique. I don't think he's necessarily the best bodybuilder. I mean, he's clearly not Derek won the Olympia, but mm -hmm. in terms of physique, I, I don't think like, like Milo said, like that is bodybuilding. I don't think anyone kind of epitomizes like, what we all train for as much as Samson does. I know some people train to be like a Nick Walker type, but I think in terms of bodybuilding, meeting beauty, I think it's, that, that's probably as good as we got for the modern era. I mean, he's kind of like, Samson's really kind of a combination of early flex wheeler, but bigger, a lot bigger. He's kind of got the qualities of that. He's, you know, there's bits of um, Victor Martinez in there, Sean Ray, mm -hmm. you know, Chris Cormier. He's like a kind of blend, you know? And look at, I mean, look at how he's improved every single year, you know? I mean, sometimes twice in a year when he does the Arnold and the Olympia. I mean, he's yeah. managed to, I mean, I heard he was weighing, at the Arnold America, I heard he was weighing 302. That was really? the one. I, I can't remember who told me that. And I can't, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't want to say, because I'd just be guessing, trying to remember, yeah. you know? 
But um, yeah, I think um, I think he's on the right track with what he brought to the LGK at the finals because I really like that look. And in the flesh, I mean, I keep saying this every time, you know, like people question his body weight and this and that. And it's like when you see him in the flesh, you realize not only how big he is, mm -hmm. but how impressive he is next to the other guys. Because at the end of the day, it's a sport of comparison. And you can pick anyone apart when they're by themselves and they're checking pitches or the videos or whatever. But when you see him next to everyone else, you see, like you said, he ticks every single box, you know, the size and conditioning, the aesthetics, you know, that's why I was worried when the, like the lower abs started popping. I was like, oh no, is he, if he blows yeah. the waistline, that's it. That's he's it. done, you know, he's yeah. going to, he's not done, but he's going to regress. He's not going to keep progressing. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel like he's very much on the right track. Um, and, um, and I, like I said, I, I mean, there's, there's no question he's going to do any shows now before the Olympia, but I also, I think he, I, I don't know why he did Prague and Romania last year. I don't really understand why he did those because Romania, he, he was the week after the Olympia and he'd only had just had a chance to kind of like with the traveling, you know, you factor it in, that's a lot of days traveling and trying to prep. And I felt like he, he could have got beat by Beruz at the, the Romania now. And I know I got some shit from Milos for that, you know? Yeah. But like he he and he looked when Beirut got moved to the center of Romania, Samson's confidence just went, and I felt like his whole stage presence, like he's physically and mentally deflated. Mm -hmm. But like my so my point is, if he's he needs to be careful about you know because he's a top three guy now, he sure. needs to be careful about trying to please everyone and and and, and get himself out there because you know you don't want to peak at a show that's not as big as the Olympia or the Arnold, and mm -hmm. you know like we've seen many many times. I mean you know. You see these like pros in the 90s and they look good at one of these small shows like Houston or the Chicago mm -hmm. and they get to the Olympia and they'd be burnt out and they, they didn't get a chance to peak properly. So, um, yeah, sorry. It's one of them. Oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> so, I just have one more question. One more question about uh, Adi, actually. So there's re been some recent discussion. I talked about this on my last podcast. A lot of guys, um, uh, so who's the best bodybuilder body builder put this out? Um, basically, Hadi Hadi Chupin's 2024 physique from the Arnold Ohio specifically. Um, oh, so not so not this one. Where does that rank in terms of like the best physiques of all time? Oh, and, of all time. Yes, and if currently I think Hadi's actually underrated in that regard because you know he's he's a current guy and a lot of guys don't like to like well back in my day or you know like back in the 90s it was so much better. But I would argue that Hadi could beat a lot more guys than most people would expect. W what do you think? So in the top 10 of all time, you mean? Uh, just anywhere. Like, where does he, is he top 15, top 20? Is he somewhere there about? Um, oh, that's a really good question. I'd have, to, yeah. I'd have to really think about that. But, you know, you've you've got guys like Kevin Navrone, Ronnie Coleman, Sean Ray, Dorian Yates, you know. Um, I mean, there's a lot of different bodybuilders there to choose from. Uh, I mean, he's, he's, he is really the, the, you know, the top of the top in terms of this modern era. Mm -hmm. um but um yeah i mean I've, i don't want to disrespect the guy or, or or you know disrespect the other guys but um i mean he's up there i mean he's i mean like, like i said i first saw him in 2017 in San Marino, and i just freaked out when he came out on stage i was like holy shit you know this was and he was one of the first two 12s to actually try and do like an open show and look i mean i mean i, I mean that was a that was like 30 guys in that lineup you had cedric really the one he looked fantastic yeah God rest his soul you had Hadi in second, who I had winning. Mm -hmm. I think there was a bit of bias there because he was a 212. And then the 212s weren't really given kind of, I felt, the respect they were deserved. You know, now now like everyone's in. Sean Carida, Kamal, they've all gone and done it and they proved themselves. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah. And uh, sorry, third was Brandon Curry that year, you know, and obviously two years later, he ended up winning the Olympia. Um, but I uh, forgot my point now. <laughs> um, yes. Hadi being like the best, uh, not, maybe not the best of all time, but you know, I mean, he's not beating guys like Phil Heath. He's not beating guys like Ronnie yeah. Coleman. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I'd argue, like you mentioned Sean Ray. I think he could beat Sean Ray on a bodybuilding qualities. I think he could be most of, I, it, I think all of Kevin's versions. Um, oh, Dorian no. Yates, Dorian Yates. I think the, the jury's out on that one. Yeah. I mean, I, I just did a comparison between him and 09 Dexter Jackson, right? Because I do the comparison videos on my channel. Oh, I saw it that. was surprisingly close. I had it. I think wow. I ended up, I do kind of end up change my mind a little bit. But the point is, like, for a lot of people, they don't want to give Hottie the credit. Like, to be that close to Dexter Jackson, 
I think I think they're filling the same niche now. You know, they're kind of always in the top spot. Maybe, you know, they haven't always been in the running for the Olympia, but they do well at every single one they enter. They're in the con- they're in the conversation. How are you measuring it though? You're measuring it by um your preference of physique or what you or what you think would win in a call out. Yeah, modern yeah, and with a modern flair, of course. Like I can only go by what we judge for now, which is different from, you know, probably what they judge for in the nineties and of course the eighties, seventies, and so on. But just with the the modern lens, I think Hottie can beat a lot of guys personally. He wouldn't beat Phil. No. He wouldn't beat Ronnie um it's difficult to say with Dorian but Dorian was I mean you know I managed to see Dorian at his peak in the 90s at the Grand Prix never at the mm-hmm. Olympia my first Olympia was 2001 and um yeah I mean I mean he is I mean he'll go down as one of the greats I mean he's I mean I do believe I, I'm pretty I've got a strong feeling he's going to win the Olympia back this year I think he's I think he's on a roll now I mean I think he he wasn't robbed last year, but um, mm-hmm. it was very close. And you know now he's got his confidence really rolling now. Um, and don't forget, this is a guy that sometimes does shows where he doesn't even know whether he's actually getting there. Yeah. Like 2019, I was at the Olympia and um, me and Ron were taking it in turns to do the interviews. I think I interviewed Brandon and then he did Haddy. And it's like a week before the show, he didn't even know whether he was getting there. Mm-hmm. So to try and stay fully on 100% prep on the off chance that you might be able to get and compete... I think that really tells me a lot about this guy's mental strength because that takes some real that takes some real faith and commitment to mm-hmm. sort of and also stress that you don't need you know the you know are you coming to do the the biggest show on the planet well you better act and train like one like you are doing it mm-hmm. so um, I think he's um, I think he's he's really he's quite special he's a very special athlete and um, yeah I just um, I mean he's just. He's just a machine, that guy. I just love him. <laughs> mm-hmm. I just think, uh, like, <clears throat> one of the better Mr. Olympias. And, you know, in yeah. terms of, especially, like, these kind of, like, stragglers we had of, like, the one- and two-time Mr. Olympias that we've had since Phil Heath, I think he beats all of them easily, except maybe Sean Roden. And even that one, I'm not super convinced of. And I, Sean Roden has my favorite physique of all time. Not that 2018 one, but the 2017 Arnold Europe. My favorite physique of all time, actually. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, but so for me to say that, you know, I mean, I just think, I just think Hadi, um is probably beating a lot more guys than people would expect. Thing is, it's he's there's such a different style of physique. It's like <clears throat> comparing Sean Roden to Hadi is like comparing Dorian Yates to Flex Wheeler. You know, they're completely, completely different heights, different type of physique. You know, it's um. The the, um, the 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 tick marks are really kind of they're completely different for both bodybuilders, mm-hmm. you know, for different types. You know, because he's short, he's packed, he's he's kind of like he's hard to critique. Do you know what I mean? Because he is just he's not lacking anything. In fact, the only thing I felt he did lack was like the separation and the condition and and the, and the detail in that rear double bicep. But he's sure. got it now. He's got it now. So it makes him, you know, I mean, I can see the shoulders there. I mean, that's distracting for me. But um, yeah. You know, I, um, you know, um, but then you had Derek with those, what they thought was suspect lats, you know, because I mean, you know, a lot of these guys do pin certain areas and sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, the rule of thumb is to not do any shots, you know, a few weeks out at all, yeah. you know, and just try and, but I, I just say to guys like, don't be lazy, stick it in your glutes. Do you know what I mean? Because it, it's something that kind of no one's really talking about. And I feel like people should, because for me, if it comes down to it and it's close and there's, there's Derek and Hadi both looking sensational, which they will at the Olympia. And you'll have Nick Walker coming back looking probably the best ever because he's going to be hungry to prove it. You can have Samson with a lot of, you know, his, you know, probably looking close to perfect. It's like, don't give the judges excuses to kind of mark you down, you yeah. know, because um, that's why one of the reasons Sean Roden won the Olympia is because overall he was just top to toe. I mean, I was there. He, he just, he looked beautiful. Mm-hmm. You know, whereas Phil, you know, the, the the hernia thing was starting to really, really show. And then that kind of, he kind of he kind of lost it because of that, really, you know. And obviously, you know, Sean was just, just he was flawless. Do you think it's fair to say Phil lost that Olympia versus Sean won it? Um, I think there's an argument for it, you know. Um, I actually thought Phil was going to win that. I was actually, I was there. I was there. And I actually, I remember because on the wrap-up after the pre-judging, because I never, I very rarely get abused, but when I do, you know, and mm. I said, oh, I think Phil's got this one. And someone called me a British turd. 
it was it, it was spelled T E R D. Yeah. Because yep. so, it was so angry that I was like, can't you see? Because sometimes when you're there and you're trying to get stuff with your phone for the, the MD Instagram and stuff like that, mm -hmm. sometimes you know you. I mean, um, I, I like to think I'm not biased at all because I love both their physiques, but I just I just assumed that Phil was going to win that one. But sure. um, when you go back and look at stuff, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, I see things that, you know, on the... It's like sometimes I don't even like to do live stream reviews from, from a laptop because I like to... Sometimes you can't... Like, I remember Ian Vallier when he won the New York Pro in 2020, it was. Yeah, yeah. And I actually said on the, on the, on the, the, the forums and stuff, I said, I've got him fourth or fifth. You know, and he won it, you know, and I'm actually, yeah. I've, I've told Ian that. And like, sometimes athletes get really pissed off with you. And it's like, look, sometimes I'm going upon what I'm seeing on a, on a freaking laptop. Yeah. And, th and this was a few years ago when we didn't have the 4K Gilco type high resolution. Mm -hmm. And sometimes like I'll go the next day and I remember looking at the high resolution vi videos and pictures of Ian. And I was like, oh, it looks fantastic. You know, yeah. Yeah. Some, you could see it, you know, I'm trying to think who there was somebody else actually recently exactly this, this exact same thing happened. And I was like, Oh, I've seen the footage now and I can completely, completely see why, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we better not go down that rabbit hole too much. I think we're getting, I think we're getting distracted. <laughs> I mean, my, my lifetime is all about distraction, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to talk, uh, touch on, onto Labrada's recent guest posing. Um, mm -hmm. Did you take a look at the video? I did. Yeah, I did. And uh, what are you, what are you thinking? How much is, I mean, I've seen the arms look a bit bigger there, but for me, he looks, he looks as good as he always has. I don't see any dramatic improvements, you know, because someone like a hunter, it reminds me of um, when Hadi, uh, sorry, Hadi, Rami was working his way up, you mm -hmm. know, and he was, and it was like, oh, he's 305 this year. He's, I was like, look, I don't want to hear about body weights. I want to hear that he's balanced his quads out with his hams and his glutes and his calves. I want to hear that he's um, he's got more separation in the upper body, that he's brought the waistline in. Sometimes he's, what is he, two, what is he saying he is now, 290 something? Uh, 295. That's, you know, that's impressive, you know, but, you know, I'm more concerned about how he'll look when it comes off, sure. you know, because sometimes, you know, being heavy doesn't necessarily mean better. So, like, for me, I'd be, I'm I, if, if somebody said, oh, Hunter's really going to be really improved at this guest posing, I'd be looking for, are the lower laps improved? Are the... You know stuff like that because I think I think Hunter's great, but um, I, I just I for me I would just want to see better balance rather than twenty pounds more muscle because then they're just a bigger version of the same physique potentially. Um, so like I mean, Rami kind of addressed all those issues in twenty twenty. Look what happened; he won the Olympia, and he dropped. And also, it's funny because um, Sean Roden. What did Sean Roden and Big Rami have to do to win the Olympia? Come down a little bit. There you go. There you go. Sean Roden was too, I mean, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, he's old training partner. I forgot his name completely. Um, the, the tall guy, the, the open guy. I know, him? I've seen pictures because they're yeah. always, they were always in Gold's he, gym. He was men's physique and then he was classic and then he was, I completely forgot his name. I'm so sorry. Oh no, you're fine. But anyway, his training partner, right? Yeah, yeah. He said that, um, uh, he told me on a, on a, when I interviewed him once, he said that um, uh, Sean Roden was 238. Um, so he was competing previously around 245 to 255. Mm -hmm. He came down to 238. Rami came down to 290 from, you know, 300 plus, like sure. 305. So isn't it funny sometimes, you know, we, we forget sometimes that actually to win a bodybuilding show, it's not about coming in like Hunter saying, I'm 20 or whatever he is normally, 10, 15 pounds heavier at this same body, at this kind of same level of condition, you know. But um, I mean, it sounds like I'm dissing Hunter. I'm really not. I think he's fantastic. And I'm glad that he's made improvements. But um yeah, I think I can close it off by saying he looks as good as he's always ever looked. I um, I actually believe in Hunter more by the day. Actually, oh really? Okay. Yeah. I, um, I think, I think, one, his waist is not going to be small. It, it, it's he can do minimal about that. He just has the wider waist in general. So I'd rather see him get as big as he can, but keep that relatively the same like if yeah. you can keep that the same but get ever i'd rather see him play to his strengths and i do think i see like i think the legs are massively improved um and he already yeah. had great legs i think i think even the back looks a little bit thicker i think we're gonna for that one since his lower back so you know just a little pudgy i think we'll have to wait and see that come off to see how much it really improved but Stop. he was on the cutler cast recently and he said i'm looking to bring the tampa pro condition with about 10 to anywhere in the ballpark i think he said a 10 to 15 
Wow, extra wow. Yeah, I think that, that's I, a funny. funny thing with Hunter is that when I when we see him in real life, you don't. I sometimes forget how tall he is. Because mm-hmm. to me, I just because he's got. I think he's got such a big head, and he's got. He's, he's a big. <laughs> Like he's got big feet, hands, and he's like Samson. He's just a big, physically big person, sure. not just muscle size. His frame, everything's huge. And um, I forget that. Uh, I, so, so my, with Sam, well, sorry, with Hunter, I felt like when I saw him at the Olympian twenty two, because I think that was the first time I'd ever actually seen him on stage. Um, I kind of went when he walked out and he came out, and I was like, oh, I get it now. He's what he's like, Samson. He's more impressive when you see him in the flesh. He's actually like I can pull him to pieces in videos and photos. Mm-hmm. But when I see him in real life, um, like when he came out, I was like, yeah, he's he's because I, I was a little bit of a critic. I was like, why, how did he get fourth in 2020? How did he, was it 21? Yeah. How did he beat Nick Walker? You know, and I'm not the biggest Nick Walker fan. I don't really like his physique, but he's mm-hmm. impressive. You know, I know, you know, he ticks the boxes, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, um, but um, when Hunter came out, I mean, he, he was out for about 20 seconds. And I was like, ah, I get it now. I, I can see why he is such a front runner. Mm-hmm. I think he just needed a lot more time in the oven. I think an interesting thing, he said, I think this past Olympia was like his 11th show ever. Yeah. <laughs> so, That's I crazy. mean, let's crazy. put it all into perspective, you know, like to only compete at 11 shows and like not be nailing it. I mean, I think that's OK. He needs to get it together at some point, obviously. But I think Tampa really, I don't know, I think I think he'll be around the top 10 at least. I don't know if he'll ever win the Olympia because I know he wants to. And I know he he likes to – he was talking in that Cutler cast about how um, – he didn't say outright that he's going to win, but he said he was going to put himself in the position to. I think if there's any chance of that, it's a couple years in the making still. Mm, but, I, don't, I don't see it. I don't see it. I think, he, I think he'll always be a top 10 guy, and I think he's, yeah. he's carved out – I think he's got one of the best side triceps in the, in the business there. Yes. I think he's done really well with a pec tear. Um, but um, – yeah, and also, do you know that when he did that Olympia and he got eighth place, was it in 2020? Mm-hmm. That was the first show he'd ever lost. <laughs> <laughs> that's... I mean, that is that's a pretty that's a pretty cool claim, isn't it? I mean, he won every amateur show, won every show. Sure, that that is wild. I didn't know that. Yeah, I think there is certainly a non-zero chance that he could, but I, I I'm with you. It's statistically probably closer to zero. Um, just because he's competing in a pretty talented era now, you know, it's just, and he does have some certain things. Like there will be guys with smaller waists. There will be guys with better backs and everything that he does. So, I mean, maybe he can bring it together and then add, add on top of that. He hasn't brought it together too many times in a row yet. It, you I, know, it um, gets a little dicey. I really respect the fact he did that show going up against Andrew Jack last year at the, the Texas yeah, because he could have pulled out and thought, "Shit, Andrew Jack's going in. I might not do." But he, you know, I like the fact that he still went for it anyway and, and gave it best shot because, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I thought it was a clear win by Andrew Jack, but a lot of people thought that, you know, it was closer than maybe I felt it was. Do you know what I mean? Because for me, it I was think a slam dunk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I think I remember doing the um, looking at the pictures and videos and talking about it on Globe Muscle, and um, yeah, it was. It was actually, yeah, he was, he, you know, he, he was, it was closer. It was quite close, you know? Yeah. He said after uh, Tampa though, his body just wasn't quite responding as the, the way he wanted to. And I think that did show up on stage. Like he had some sweating issues. His stomach wasn't as in control. And he talked about that also on his recent Cutler cast, how, um, well, he's not blending food anymore for one. <laughs> um, yeah. but he had, uh, some gut issues resolved. You know, he right. had some underlying gut issues that he didn't know he had, but He's kind of gone back to the drawing board on that and is really prioritizing that gut health. And I've seen some vlogs, you know, he's he's making better choices, let's say, than blending chicken and rice. He's very transparent as well with his diet, his training. And yeah. I like that, you know, cut the, um, cut the, um, Hunter gets a lot of shit, you know, he gets a lot of hate and a lot of um, and I don't know why it is, because I mean, apart from the fact he always calls me Giles when he sees me. <laughs> <laughs> like, but um, I, I've, I've always had a good experience. I mean, I, I've interviewed him a couple of times. He was very polite, very respectful, very punctual, um, you know, and um, and I think I think sometimes people say, like, you know, he, he's got an unfair advantage because his dad's it's the last partner, name because yeah. he's got the money because, yeah. he's, you know, he's got his own private gym to train in and he's, you know, he's kind of got everything set up for him. But, you know, it's like I've seen a lot of kids in, in privileged positions do absolutely jack shit, just go snowboarding. Do you know what I mean? For sure. Smoke weed, for, smoke weed to their 45, you know. But like you know, he, you know he's put the work in, and you know I, I think he um I think he deserves a little bit more bit of bit of bit of bit of respect and leeway, you know, because you know I mean um yeah the baseball cap needs to go. Though. What do you think? 
Uh, he he likes doing that. Is is what yeah. he said. He said he, he was just like, oh, I just uh, I just like doing the hat. I don't I don't really know why that <laughs> is. It it, I, it it doesn't bother me. Like Ronnie, you know, he used to wear boots sometimes. You know. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. And then I do yeah. want to jump back because <clears throat> we got a little sidetracked. Beirut versus um. Oh, shit. yeah that's a good one that's a good topic yeah i've not really thought about them but i'm gonna have to think about it quick now aren't I? <laughs> we didn't uh we didn't get to see them in romania together because beirut's uh, prague because beirut's couldn't get to prague or didn't want to do prague. yeah i was disappointed with that disappointed with that yeah because they were back to back but he couldn't make the second one but oh. i don't know i think i mean Crizo, i think do you think he was closer to samson do you think he was Sorry, who? Do you think Chris was close to Samson in Prague? No, no, it was quite clear cut. But you think Beirut Beirut was closer ish to Samson in Romania? Oh yeah, I I, I mean I re, re, Samson really left the door open potentially to get beat there by someone that you know we don't we don't think is a lot of people don't realize how good Beirut is because we've not seen him at the Olympia, we've not seen yes. him at the American shows. You know he's done European shows in Romania, which has good competitors, but. You know, sometimes in our head, you know, it's like it's like when you ask someone, oh, oh, "Where's he ranked in the world?" Oh, he's no, he's seventh best in the world because mm-hmm. he took seventh at Olympia. That's how we gauge it, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's difficult to say how good Beirut is. I mean, really, for me, he's a, I mean, certainly top ten Olympia. I think but maybe, so. maybe even. I mean, it's hard, it's difficult because the legs do need just that little bit more pop. Yeah. You know? But I'm telling you, Beirut, I mean, I've been raving about him because I was at the E2 uh, Romania, myself and Laura were doing the live stream commentary. Yeah. Um, yeah. The two, you know, um, and I tell you what, he's 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 mind-blowing in the flesh. I mean, he's like, like when, you know, he's he's almost like sort of like Haddy level impressiveness. Mm-hmm. You know, the way like he does that front bicep and just everything just pops and his tiny little waist, you know, and it's just crazy glutes and... I mean, I remember if you if you, if you saw the if you saw the live stream um, in twenty two, um, the night show. I mean, I actually ended up like, losing my shit. I was like, whoa, because he was it was actually walking to the side of the stage. He uh-huh. hadn't even walked on stage like properly into the middle of the lights yet. And I went, what has he done in four hours? I was messaging Milos. I was messaging Milos live mm-hmm. on the live stream. I said, what the hell did he do? He looks sensational. I can see by his silhouette that he'd you know he'd really nailed it. And then when uh-huh. he came out, I was just. Um, his posing routine was shocking, man. The music was terrible. It was, I mean, he really needs to work on that. <laughs> but um, because he's got such a he's like a Samson, he's got aesthetics, he's got size, yeah. he's got, you know, he's got flow. And I tell you what, if if he can just get those quads up, because from the front and the side and the back, they look incredible. Mm-hmm. But for the front, he just needs that little bit more in his legs because then I think I think potentially, you know, he's you know, he's we're, we're heading up more to like a multi pro show winner and like a top six Olympia guy. Mm-hmm. But um, as it stands, I think um, he's like a fifth to eighth place guy. I think. What do you think? Uh, I did a comparison with him <clears throat> versus Hunter, and I thought he stacked up quite well. Um, and, you know, the, the legs hurt him from the front, but that's really just the front. Um, and Hunter has the waist issue from the front, so I thought they could compare very well, actually. Um, so I, I think around there, yeah, I mean, Crizzo was just behind Hunter. So I guess we'll really get a confirmation for that. But I mean, yeah. Crizzo doesn't have the, the widest quads ever. And his waist is even bigger than Beirut's. So yeah. the way I see it, I think, um, it, it's still kind of apples and oranges, but I think either of them could win. I kind of lean a little bit more to Beirut's though. I mean, I think he has a better back. The side chest is actually quite good. I don't know. I mean, I know Crizzo is impressive, and I'm sure even more impressive in person when you see that. But I don't know. Uh, it's that, like it's like Hadi and Samson, isn't it? It's like it's it's different styles of physiques, mm-hmm. and you know, it's difficult to say when. Like I said, I mean, I, I mean, it sounds like a complete copper, but I'll know when I see them on stage next to because I'm doing the I'm doing mm-hmm. the live stream for M Pro as well, so I'll see them. So you'll. If you watch the live stream, you'll get my honest first reaction. But um, yeah, it's difficult. I just because like Crizo's kind of got his, his flaws as well. I mean, I tell you what though, Crizo, um, because I was there at the, the Prague show when he made his pro debut. And I mean, yeah, he's funny because in the morning, about an hour and a half before the judging um started, he turned up in like tight t-shirt, 
you know, in his baggies and stuff. And he was white as a ghost. He was like Branch Warren, James Holland's head white. Yeah. Ian Valier white. And I was like, this guy's going on stage in an hour and a half. I thought, that's how cocky is that? Showing up. Why would you, how amateurish and sloppy is that? To be turning up to a show like this, your pro debut in a show that, you know, you're sponsored by the promoters and everything else, even though it has no effect on the judge. And I'll make that perfectly clear. Mm-hmm. It's like, why is he doing And then, of course, he turns up for the pre-judge. His tan looks like shit. And because his arms are so big, every time he's moving to do it like a uh, side chest or something, all the tan was rubbing off his lats. So he'd lift his arms up and he had these white lats and the tan just looked like exactly what it had been, yeah. what it was. It just looked at just being put on in a rush mm-hmm. because he just showed up. And I mean, he had no base tan, he had no pro tan. I mean, I, back in the days, I used, to, I used to use dream tan, you know, the instant tan, but I would put on two or three coats of pro tan as a base and I'd be using some beds and, you know, and just sure. so the tan goes on nicely, you know? So I was really like... Um, so anyway, the night show, he kind of showed up and he, you know, he looked better and he won it, but it was a, it was a weak lineup, you know, it was a, it wasn't, it wasn't a strong lineup. So, yeah. um, but then last year in Spain, he fixed the tan, he fixed the posing, his conditioning, you know, so he's a guy like, kind of like Samson that you know is going to be improved. And like I said, I saw him last week in Slovakia. I mean, it's, he's just, I mean, I'd say he has the best arms in bodybuilding right now. Who do you think, who do you think comes close? Um, Nick Walker comes close, but I, I would agree. Actually, and now that, now, now that we're on that, I think I changed my mind. I think Chriso is actually. <laughs> <laughs> you Chriso just looked at the went, holy fuck. Yeah. Chriso is, my, is actually one of my favorite modern bodybuilders. Like of the, of, of, the past, of the past one, two years, he's one of my favorites. I agree. I'm, I'm with you as well. I mean, I, for me, he's exciting. Um, mm-hmm. And he's, and, and also, like I said, when he turned up to Prague that first time, I was like, he just, he just looks like he's just rocked up and he's, he looks, he looks amateurish. He's posing, but then look what he did in one year. He fixed the posing, the yeah. conditioning, the tan. And I mean, he looked like a polished professional. I mean, at the Olympia last year, I felt like they really, um, they, they wanted to get in his conditioning so bang on. Mm-hmm. They actually risked, they actually sacrificed quite a bit of fullness. Yeah, and yeah. I think they really were frightened of him smoothing out or, you know, overspilling and stuff. So so for me, I felt like we saw him looking fantastic at the Olympia last year, but I felt like they erred on the side of caution just because it was the Olympia and they didn't want to risk trying to overspill him and then his, his gut coming out or, you know, like mm-hmm. sometimes when they, they carve, I don't know, I'm not saying he does, but, you know, when they carve up with insulin and they push the food in and, you know, sometimes, you yeah. know, because he, he hasn't got the smallest waist. So yeah. if he does, and it's got to you know, go somewhere. So I, I, I think, and I, I predict you see it in the Empro, I think you'll see the, the best version because I think there'll be less, you know, I think it's it's, it's an, not an easier show, than, well, it is an easier show than the Olympia technically, you yeah, know, with Ben yeah. and other guys, you know? But I think um, I think you'll see, I think you'll see like, an, a, like a really deadly version of, um, of Chriso because even at Prague last year, he looked good, but again, he was, you know, they brought him a little bit flat. And the thing is, next to Rubiel, who's just Mr. Round and Bubbly, you know, I mean, the side shots, I mean, Rubiel crushed him in the side shots and Samson. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And as for Rubiel, what did you say he was doing? Um, Dubai? I, yeah, I was told in, um, who told me actually when I was in Slovakia? No, the Arnold UK. I think maybe who told me? Was it? I don't want to say it. Maybe Chris called me. I don't know. Somebody told me that he's doing Dubai. Um, and, um, but the rumor was that he was doing the New York pro and we were going to see him go up against Nick Walker. But, um, Amazing. all I heard was that he's definitely, he's definitely doing Dubai. So that'll be exciting. Obviously they're, they're follow- again, they're following the prize money. Yeah. Um, Chris, I mean, Rubiel not doing the Arnold UK. I mean, I think he could have got there. Did he have the visa? Because he definitely couldn't have done the Arnold Ohio any way you slice it. He just couldn't make it. And I knew he, he wasn't, wasn't good in New York at that point. Mate, he wasn't prepping yeah and i no, mean I, I i saw the progress videos and i was i was messaging a couple of people you know on the on them um, but some friends and stuff and i said he's, he's not prepping he's not changing at all he's not getting bigger he's not getting harder um so i i, I think there was there was no intention that he was going to do the Arnold uk because um i mean there was a few like andrew jacked and you know haddy and stuff like that that um they kind of confirmed but who else was there somebody else that dropped out the Arnold uk as well wasn't there um, horse MD, you know, he was on the poster. I think they invited them and just automatically stuck him on the poster thinking they were going to turn up. But um, yeah. I think they should review that for next year because you get people, you know, buying tickets who are looking forward to seeing uh, Rubiel and then they don't show up. You know, even though you've got the Haddies and Samsons, you know, sometimes, you know... It would have been you know, even people, more insane, yeah. yeah you know, people are like, they're always going to complain you know, if, they, if their guy isn't there, you know? Yeah. But, um, but uh, yeah, Rubiel, um, 
he, I mean, he blew my socks off when I saw him at the, the, the Prague because I got there the second day. I didn't see him at the amateur the first day. So mm. I didn't see him at the pre judging of the amateur. And I was sat at the front in front of the judges on these, ta- on the guest tables with me, George Farah, AJ, and Chris Cormier. And they'd all seen him. They'd all seen him at the pre judge. <laughs> and Steve Weinberg and the judges were literally 10 foot behind me. Anyway, so I'm like, okay. And they go, ah, oh, no, Rubiel, you know, that's what, what, Mosquera, whatever his name is. Mm-hmm. And he came out and I showed, I just went, holy fuck <laughs> and i went oh my god he just like and then i just went and then chris and george just turned around and just burst out laughing going yeah that was our response too anyway yeah. so i turned around because i kind of shouted it loud you know it was just like an instant like your reaction and then uh, i turned around to say sorry to steve weinberger and he was just laughing nodding going yeah i, get it. I used to just say yeah i get it i get it i get it i was i'm so sorry so sorry and he was just laughing going no i understand i understand probably our reaction too you know i can only imagine seeing that in person oh he's a freak he's a freak mate he's a freak he's a nice kid as well nice kid how old is he uh, I, I i've got 28 in my head that's what i wanted to say yeah yeah so because i spoke to chris and i said you know because chris had been working with him for a while and um and he said uh he said, yeah, Giles, he said he was not that he was he built that chest and back in the last year. He said a lot of his physique there has been done in like in in in, in just over a year. He said his kid has barely got started. Um, um in fact, like photos, like photos and videos, I can pull him apart. But when you see him in the flesh, mate, um, I mean his side chest and side tricep. I mean, it definitely, yeah. definitely, I mean, those aren't Samson's best shots, but he took out Samson and Crizzo in those side shots, side shots, mate. Mm-hmm. You know, that's impressive pro debut, you know, and there's you know. To very you know, uh, number three and seven at the Olympia, just you know, so and this kid has barely got started. I just hope because thing is, he's gone from a level of fame from there to the oh, fame, or we want to call it attention, sure. you know. Like we were, we were sat at the, the restaurant, and he's like, hey, he was looking at it, he said, every time I refresh, my Instagram followers are going up by thousands, uh-huh. you know, because obviously the word had got out. I mean, I put a video on, um, was it 1.2 million views or something on my just, just, just him being voted in the overall at the at the amateur show but but what i'm trying to say is i just hope that because i see some of his posts and it's not him training in the gym it's some of it's like him with his new gucci man bag and it's on the (laughs) beach and it's like you know because he is he's gone from being a complete unknown relatively to a to a freaking overnight superstar of bodybuilding that everyone's talking about like they were with ruby uh, sorry um chriso the year before or nick walker or you know those the, the the next big thing and i and i'm just hoping i'm hoping He's still staying grounded and he's really focused on what he needs mm-hmm. to focus on, you know, because I mean, this kid has got an absolutely incredible future because I've seen him in the flesh and may, it will blow your mind. Let's say he does everything right. Does he have potential to win the Olympia? Let's say what in whatever time frame that is, you know, five, eight years, whatever that is, maybe three, you know, maybe I mean, he improves I'd fast. To, I'd be a fool to say no. I'd be a fool to say no, because like I said, he's so early on in his career and he's already sure. so good, but you know that's dependent on him doing, say, what Samson has done. You know, just keep working and improving. Like Hadi, you know, these it's no, there's no, there's no secret. There's the, the you know the the best guys are also actually when you really really follow them are actually the hardest working guys as well. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, I just hope he stays grounded and he, you know, like um, like some of these some sponsors they jump on these guys. I mean, they they they're, they're pulling them around and different appearances and stuff, and they kind of work them too hard trying to jump on the bandwagon and to, to help their sales of whatever products they're trying to sell. I've seen it happen many, many times. You know, they, um, you know, I've seen it many times where companies jump on these next big thing and then they tie them into these contracts and, but they work them too hard to the point where, you know, and also when you go from having very little money to a lot of money, you know, I mean, when I was in my twenties, it happened to me, you know, with, with the work I was doing in the supplement industry and other mm-hmm. sources of income, and I just, my life just went completely chaotic overnight. Do you know what I mean? And it's, uh, I found that. <laughs> so let's, let's move on to the, uh, the main topic of discussion today. So not tomorrow, but the next day is going to be <laughs> yeah. the, uh, the Arnold Brazil, the Arnold, well, technically Arnold South America, but you know, everyone's calling it the, uh, the Arnold Brazil because it is that confused me as well. That confused me. I was trying to find it on the tag and I was like, I thought it was probably Arnold Brazil, but no, in South America. Hmm. Um, so in terms of lineup, um, the bodybuilders without borders had one. Look at Raphael there, he's only 24 there. That picture there, in the middle, that one there, he's 24 there, and he he competed because I saw Raphael made his pro debut at the San Marino, yes, 
And he was something like, I think he was about 240, 245 then. He's probably like 190, 200 pounds or something in that first sure, one. He, yeah. did, he did that in like, what was it, a couple of years, a year or, year or two or something. And um, he got first call out in his first pro show with Hadi Chupin, um, uh, Cedric McMillan, Brandon Curry, Tim Buddhashow, and we got fourth. Mm-hmm. You know, and he ended up getting eighth. But man, well, imagine that going from like being a junior to like a year, like kind of like, De- like Derek Lunsford did in 2017, where he just hit the ground running you know exactly yeah in july he's amateur and then he's that he's winning the overall usa's a week later he's winning the tampa 212 then six weeks later he's coming fifth in the olympia and winning rookie mm-hmm. of the year so in the space of like what seven seven eight weeks or something you know eight eight nine weeks you've gone from being an amateur to rookie of the year at the olympia it just shows you how you know how how fast some of these guys can rise mm-hmm. sorry so, complete complete tangent again there sorry oh no you're 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 good so Lineup here. Um, I do want to mention John De La Rosa is on here, not doing the show, not right. doing the show. Right. Um, but there's basically, I guess we we should touch on classic first because a lot of these guys, I think it looks like all of them are from Brazil, unless it's yeah. So there's two back here. Every single one of them, uh, is from Brazil, and hmm. I think. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did not say just you just now you said that it's like Brazil, 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 Brazil. So. The main guy everyone's talking about is Fabio Junio, who is doing classic, um, not doing the 212. I don't even think there is a 212 with this show. Um, no. So, and then, who was the guy you were talking about before we started? Um, Livingstone Livinho, just below Fabio there. Funnily enough, he's from Brazil. <laughs> this guy right here. Yeah. Yeah. Someone, someone said he'd make a good 212, and I, I kind of see it. You know? I do too. I mean, I, I'd love to know his body weight. Yeah, because to me, I mean, that's definitely like that is crazy shape. But Beautiful. I mean, it's like that's like bordering on overdeveloped for classic to a point. If you can believe in a certain thing, to me, I do. Some people don't. Um, but you know, the legs are they look like two twelve legs, at least from the front, at least in this picture. Yeah, it's a um, tiny waist. I mean, that waist looks about twenty eight inch, twenty eight inches, doesn't it? Let's see here. So we can take a look at him first. But, but also, um, I mean, you think about, like, he's probably close to the limit. I mean, I, I would very be, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. And then you've got someone like Terrence Ruffin, who's like a few pounds under. And like, I mean, he looks double the size of Terrence Ruffin, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some guys, um, and I, I speculate on this a lot. I think it has a lot to do with density and particularly bone density, actually. Yeah. Um, uh, because I think it's just a scientific fact that black guys do have black black people actually do have higher bone density relative to caucasian people well they can't swim well that that's uh, <laughs> that's what it said that, because they, they're not that, they're not the best they're, like they're they're sort of genetically gifted to to run fast in sprints but mm-hmm. you know 100 meters but you know it's um yeah. so yeah i'd be interested to see what he weighs too and i don't know how tall he is he doesn't look bigger than Brion, does, because Brion looks like legit, looks like a a, a good two twelve in the classic. I mean, he's I, somehow he makes weight. I mean, he's a freak. Look at that. That's wow. Oh, Sergio be Sergio, Sergio yeah. that, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell you what, Sergio Junior might have something to say about that. He's stealing his pose. Look at that. Look at that's popping out. I mean, looks he looks like it. I put on the comment. I say he looks like a human Photoshop, but he isn't. Mm-hmm. Not Photoshop to me. Oh, Mayo started up. I'm just going to shut this door, mate, because he's gotcha. going to start squawking. One second. Oh. Off. Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> Giles, do you always put a uh, button-up shirt on? Sorry, mate. The, the Mayo escaped. He's, the, oh, he's, he's famous for disrupting my podcasts so if, if we don't lock him in a room, you know? So. <laughs> do you always put a button-up shirt on every single day? Uh, yeah, yeah. Every single day. Uh, uh, yeah, and especially when I'm filming. I mean, I, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I always. I, I, if you ever saw me at the Olympias or the Arnolds, I mean, even when I used to go down for breakfast at the hotels, I'd have an iron shirt and trousers on, and it was just. I don't know. Maybe I was trying to. I don't know. I just. I've always. Because I grew up in. A, I grew up in um, it's this 16th century pub. Growing up as, as a kid, and my dad, you know, he's like the only landlord in town that wear a shirt and tie behind the bar, you know, daytime, nighttime and, you know, smart trousers and stuff. It's just, it's just always been instilled to me that, 
I just want to, I, I kind of want to stand out for, that's just my style, I guess. That's just trying to make it long winded there. It's just, I like to be smart, you know? Yeah. And, you know, uh, I've never, I've never been to a bigger show, a show in general. But if I was, okay. it's to me respectful to dress up for at least finals. Cause you know, oh, yeah. it goes back uh, yeah, to yeah, yeah. way Everyone back does it at Olympia. Everyone does it at Olympia and it looks amazing. All the women are beautiful dresses and it's this kind of an occasion. It's the, it's the best day of the biggest show of the bodybuilding show calendar of the year. You know, it's like, yeah. it's like Ron Harris. I always pressure. I was like, come on, mate. And then whenever he does, he puts a suit on, he looks awesome. And everyone comments and plus you yeah. feel more professional. You feel more. And the thing is for me, it's about respect to the athletes. If you're interviewing them, you know, and I've got a bloody baseball cap on backwards, you know, and a smelly old t-shirt and I'm in my gym baggies and stuff, which I have seen, believe it or not, with some of the interviewers. And I just think how, you know, this is, you know, this is the best of the best, you know, it's, um, so for me, it's like, it's a no brainer. It always has been. Well, Giles, if you see me at the Olympia or if you see me out and about, I'll be sure to dress up for you. I, I won't even speak to you if you're not wearing a shirt and trousers. I'll just, I'll just, that's how it you know, should be. I'll, I'll, I'll walk past you and I'll say, you know, I'll, you know. <laughs> not, not quite on my level. <laughs> no, no it just, you just feel, you feel more professional and, you know, and plus when you're backstage and there's Arnold and, you know, and, and Jake Wood and all the, you know, the Mr. Olympias and stuff, you just kind of, you want to feel, you know, because I think I've always had a bit of imposter syndrome anyway. So I always feel, like I want to, I have to make extra effort potentially, you know, to just to feel, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm sort of part of, part of it, you know, to feel like I'm, I'm worthy, you know? I got you. I got you. You know, and I've, done, I've, I've been doing this nearly 30 years, mate. And I still feel like that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll start doing this. Next time you see me on the podcast, I'm going to have the one button down Giles <laughs> special. But no, the thing is also, it's like um, the, the, the athletes really appreciate it. You know, it's like when I, when I come on, they come online and stuff and you're dressed in a suit and stuff like that. And that's you know, what other sports the, do. Yeah. And you've got the nice studio and stuff. The athletes really appreciate the effort you go to, you know, they really, they'll take you more seriously and they'll give you, you'll get better interviews because if you, they see a lot of them see it as well, probably all of them see it as a mark of respect that you're there for them. You know, you're there to promote them and listen to their story and ask the questions. And I kind of, it's just a, it's a good first impression is my point. You know, I mean, you wouldn't show up to a job interview like in, you know, you know, like a wife beat a vest and some shorts with egg stains on and, you know, and you sure, know, shaving yeah. and stuff. You know, you, you dress for the job you want. You, you kind of, you dress for, what's the word I'm looking for? You're the, how, and also it's about how people perceive you. I always want to be perceived as a professional. So yeah. that's how I've always done it, you know, especially when I was, certainly, especially when I was younger as well, you know. Gotcha. So, okay. So we've talked about, uh, What's his name? Livingston? Living Ho? Yep. Looks good. And then kind of in that top three mix is uh, Diego. I'm pronouncing it Galindo. Um, G-A-L-I-N-D-O. So the, maybe the L's like, you know, kind of like a silent. Maybe it's Gaindo or something like that. I don't really. Yeah. But Nice physique. Nice physique, isn't it? What do you think? Um, I, one of my favorite classic physiques, like actually. Um, I saw him at his shows where he was kind of going back and forth with Gabriel Zancanelli. And, oh um, yeah, yeah, he's nice physique. We went to two twelve, didn't we? I think Gabriel's going to stay in classic okay. for a little bit. But Diego, I've, I've seen this guy. I've seen this guy. I saw him on Body Was Up Borders a few weeks ago, and I really like he's these shots, these floor shots that I saw. They blew me away. Yeah, I'm trying to find one where you could just like the lat flare on him is insane. Maybe, maybe, maybe in this video, great poser. <laughs> As well. So, okay. So, this is just a collage. Beautiful. Look at that. That's classic, isn't it? That's classic. Look at the, did you see the lap flare? I mean, do, do you know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see some like really, like really high resolution black and white shots zoomed in of those shots because that will really highlight. I think color won't, doesn't, if you saw black, like that shot there, that, that shot there, hang on. No, uh, the go back, go back. This sorry. one? Uh, no, go back to the, the main page, go up. I mean, look at that. I mean, that's, yeah, that's the kind of shot. The, that one there, that one, sorry, I'm pointing to something you can't see, that one. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's incredible. Look at that. I mean, that's, I'm trying to, I mean, that's kind of like Lila Brada kind of, mm -hmm. that's, for me, that's because I've got a very artistic background, you know, like, um, um, so for me, that is, that's, that's spectacular. That's pr true classic. So the only, I actually had him, when I was doing my Olympia predictions for last year, I was like, well, the kind of like 12th through 10th spots, they can kind of, be changed around so i was like you know what i'll throw diego's name in there he he got kind of close i think he still placed even out of like a lot of guys in classic but the thing is he's like extremely short i didn't realize how short he was oh I is thought, he oh is he, he yeah. he's not like he's not like 
he's not like 411, but you know, he's probably maybe closer to Terrence height. I don't know if there's say that again? Uh, closer to Terrence's height. Oh, Terrence, what like five? I'm trying to guess. Five, five six, five. five five, something in oh, there. Okay, that's not amazing. I mean, plus also the 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 weight cap, the new increased weight cap. I don't know how. I, I've never actually fit, tried to figure out why, but the the short the short guys it favors them more. Because I remember speaking to Wesley, and he said, um, I said, oh, the weight increase is going to really benefit you. He says, yeah, about eight about nine hundred grams, two pounds. I was like, hang on, how does that work when Brion can get? eight or whatever or whatever it was a lot more for a short yeah, they're trying time. to balance that out yeah they need to because for me that doesn't i mean like i said i've not sat down and worked out how it works out but to me it doesn't make sense mm -hmm. but you can see here like um i think westermeyer if i'm not mistaken and then yes um, alexander westermeyer and then you've got uh, laszlo corelli corelli that's yeah. not a very good shot of laszlo is it um that's a really poor shot of laszlo he doesn't his legs look really thin there I think they kind of always do. And his <laughs> upper body is extremely wide. Like yeah. that doesn't help. That doesn't help whatsoever. Yeah, um, but, but you can see, you know, like even Fabio Junio, who who actually may even be shorter than uh, Diego. I think either actually uh, Fabio is just further back uh, by a yeah. couple inches. But I mean. What's that I, guy doing in the background? <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's doing a monkey impression. A bit like, like a chimpanzee or something. What's he doing? Beating his chest. Uh, I think we need other contexts. <laughs> yeah. But, but against, I didn't realize, I thought that Fabio was a little bit taller. So mm. the gripe I had with Diego, even though like I love everything about him, I like how he has very small joints, his bone structure. He's very thin in the bone structure, if that makes sense. But all of his yeah. muscle bellies are kind of like tight. Oh, I guess yeah. you can say like the biceps peak really well and they're shorter, but I kind of like that look. Um, I don't know. I think I just like the, the overall look and like, That's like this shot right here. What, what show was that? What show was that? Obviously a Brazilian show, I'm guessing. But that, I mean, that condition is beautiful. Look at the stripy dells. Look at, I mean, the fact that you can see the rear dell on his right arm. Look at the way it separates. You yeah. can see that line. You, like, this is what bugs me about the open guys when they start. They're too, I would, it is laziness that they don't want to pin their asses. Do you know what I mean? They pin their shoulders. They, Everyone that, oh should God. be able to reach. Yeah. You work so hard to get that conditioning and then they kind of, fuck it up by just putting all the gear in there and you lose all that quality. So that, like that picture now, imagine if he had a load of gear in his belts that, you know, basically got rid of all those lines. That would completely destroy the picture. Mm -hmm. Let's see, nice. then I'll bring up, um... so you, are you familiar with this guy, Diego? Uh, I, I, well, I remember the photos. I remember being impressed by him. I mean, he's yeah. got a beautiful, beautiful physique. Gotcha. So, you know, conditioning there in that, like I said, those Brazil shots. Look at his triceps; they're like carved out of stone, you know, mm -hmm. dry as a bone. But and I love, I love the the sunken in cheeks. I always love that when I used to compete. Yeah, yeah. So Four weeks out, you like, you like match oh, yeah. Up. It's like uh, the most memorable one is um, for me, Dorian Yates. Like he <laughs> literally looked like a different person. He did. He did. In fact, the day of my first show, I remember I had my hoodie on and I. Me and my girlfriend at the time had turned up and, and I was saying hello to everyone. And everyone, I said to myself, I'm getting really pissed off. She said, why? I said, because I've just said hello to like four or five of my mates there. And they're just, they're just staring at me. She says, Charles, they don't recognize you. <laughs> <laughs> they don't realize it's you. Like, because obviously hoodie up and the face in. I mean, I used to have a quite a chubby face before my first breath, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I was getting really annoyed. And she said, she, they don't bloody recognize you. Fact, my sister, when she saw me, burst into tears when she saw me because she said, my face looked so <laughs> No, no. I said, no, a couple of days I'll be back again. Yeah, don't sure, worry. yeah. And yeah. then last guy that we're going to talk about for Classic is um, Fabio Junio, who won. Did he win Dubai? No. Or did... Terrence won Dubai, but Fabio ended up beating Wesley, if I'm not mistaken. In oh, wow. Okay, that's a good scalp. If, good scalp. if not, they were right next to each other. Okay. Um, but Fabio thought he was going to go into the 212, but it looks like he's making one maybe final push for classic probably not final push because he's probably looking to get qualified for Olymp the olympia do that in the classic again and but he's very big for this division very complete and a lot of people immediately speculate that he would go to 212 he kind of teased that himself i believe um but i think it's his show to lose i is that sorry is that johan schatz in the background yeah yeah, I thought so. I thought so. Yeah, he's a good, he's a good trainer. He's, he's very up and coming. Um, yeah, it looks great. His physique's nice and symmetrical. Um, uh, could, could do a little bit more quads in the front. What do you think? That's his biggest weakness for sure. Yeah. Um, like like Peru's. Exactly. Um, 
They're nice. I liked it. I didn't expect that pop when he did that front or bicep. Everything just kind of like jumped off the bone. I like that, you know, because he looked kind of good when he was stood there relaxed. But I like those physiques that you could scan across the line if you think, and they don't really kind of jump out. And then when they start posing, you're like, holy shit, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. Like Beru's, like Hadi, those kind of physiques. That's what I like to see, you know? I guess not too much from Dubai, but I guess that was all the way back last year now. Um, several months. I think this is maybe a little bit before Dubai, but yeah, quad sweep from the front. He definitely, he definitely needs. They look um, good there, though. They look good in that photo. Other than that, I don't really see like his back is tremendous, um, and he has some good, you know, classic shots. I, I don't know if you'd call the classic necessarily uh, the, the side tricep necessarily classic, but that's, the way he hits it, that's a terrible shot. You, you know, <laughs> no, I no, would no, don't hit it like that. I mean, that really highlights all his. You know, it doesn't highlight his strengths, let's put it that way. But um What about here? What about here? In this middle video right there. I don't like that. Really? I think no. the upper body is definitely a letdown, but I think upper body wise. I like his in is it I love his intercostals. Yeah. I, I like that's that's what I like about Hadi when he does that, lifts the arm up and he just crunches down and the, these little fingers just start popping out. They jump, they look they almost like they're like several inches away from his body there that they're that thick and developed yeah. i love it i love it you know because i i think nice intercostals they really you know it looks very ryan terry there actually the um the intercostals kind of like when i would get ready for a show like my waist would drop you know like a couple of inches because i'd really start to sure. train my intercostals and really bring them in because that you know remember remember the 90s you know you see dorian kevin Lebron, sean ray they would turn to that quarter turn when they used to do the quarter turns you know and it just it just really brings those lines in from the mm. laps into the into the obliques and it just it's it's a beautiful pose when that when you know the, that those that body part is nicely developed. So you're seeing him here. Um hopefully he turns around to the back in this one. Um but in terms of I, I had him at uh in my Olympia predictions within the top ten because okay. I thought after the Dubai I thought he was so good he he ended up getting like twelfth or something um not bad, not bad. yeah it was it was obviously stacked but i mean he just the quads from the front are the biggest issue for him like we you saw the vacuum it's not a waist issue his waist is small um carrying a lot of size so he's you know pretty good in side chest and the back is just a knockout um like you said good abs i just don't see anyone i think diego will probably be sec maybe not second He's still going to be in the top three, but I think if anyone's going to push Fabio, it's going to be that uh, Living Ho guy. Let's see if Living Ho's, though, an Instagram bodybuilder, because I've not seen any stage sure. pictures. All I've seen is those beautiful shots. And how many times have we been fooled by these guys that look, God, this guy's going to win everything. And then he get on stage and you're like, is that the same guy? Yeah. So let's see. Let's see if he's one of them, because he might be one of those guys that just bombs out and gets like 10th or 12th or something. You don't know. Mm -hmm. Or he might come in and look at every bit or if better than his Instagram. You know, it's... Uh, that's the thing with social media; it can be so bloody misleading. It's hard to make it's hard to make preview videos when you know you've not seen them on stage yet, and mm -hmm. all you've seen is like you know stuff when they were amateur or in a blurry video, and you know, and it was like several years ago, and you know they haven't. And like I said, there's you know how many times have we been let down? And also, I you know so we've also seen it where they actually look even more impressive. So he could be one of them, yeah. and just completely, completely annihilate this guy. You don't know. I think if it translates well. It's going to be interesting, but for now, I think Fabio is clearly the more tested one. Um, take a look at this back here. Yeah, there, it's not. Wow, that's that's top to toe, fully developed. Mm -hmm. Lower lats, the separation's good. There's no there's separation between the delt heads because I do include the arms and the delts in the middle. But I still yeah. think it's just about the back. No. You know, like the, look at the traps. I mean, he's beautifully separated. I mean, that's that's hard to critique. Yeah. And this is with the shadows. I, I could tell you right now, it looked a lot better in Dubai. You know, he's they're kind of in the shadows underneath. The, it's kind of awning at the gym, um, but it's going to look even better on stage. I, I guarantee it. And that and it's already good here. So, do you know how many weeks out that is? Or this video? No, um, but I think this is from the supplement company over. Maybe Max Titanium or whatever mm. the supplement company is, and they always they are always behind. They don't ever show. Oh. Recent updates very recently. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're always behind. Yeah, I've had that where they go um, recent, recent update, and then you know they say, "Well, actually, it was filmed two weeks ago." He's, he's a lot better than that now, you know. So, reminds me of Ryan Terry there when he does the ab shot. Yeah, I think <laughs> it's the blue trunks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah i'm really i'm hoping to do a tour around terry as well actually yeah that'd be that'd be exciting you know biggest men's physique uk guy i think uh by default now especially now that he's won the olympia yeah um it's, it's funny because he said um because he was seventh the year before and he said um he said like you know this is definitely my last year he says i just want to try and make you know get back up because he'd been second to like uh, jeremy buendia and everything and then um and then he said oh, well, i only won and bloody won it <laughs> <laughs> I've got to do it next year. He obviously yeah. wants to, you know, because he was almost like, oh shit, you know, I've never seen, it. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, oh no, I've got, I've got, I'm committed now for sure. Okay, yeah, not a, not a bad thing to complain about, is it? No, absolutely not. <laughs> so that uh, that brings us to open, and I think there's four guys being talked about. Um, William Martins, um, mm -hmm. Good Vito, Vitaly Ugonikov, uh, Tony Burton, and Raphael Brandau. So those yeah. seem to be the four. I'm not saying anybody can't pick off, you know, those two guys. I think the top two is kind of set. Um, yeah. But we can start with William Martins, who is literally so good everywhere else. Very good, very complete, except for one area. That, of course, just being the stomach. And I guarantee I won't be able to find a picture. Um, because I wouldn't, I mean, quite frankly, I wouldn't post it either. It's just not very separated. Um, and the abs and thighs, when he turns to the side, it's surprisingly okay, <laughs> but yeah, and he's getting, he's in condition, has great legs. Everything else is just that, that stomach from the front. I, I would go as far to say with Akeem Williams, I think he's got probably the top five best, um, side chest and side triceps side shots. He's up there with Rubiel. If you actually look at an Akeem, you know, like the, like, cause He's got size, he's got conditioning, but he's got really nice lines and tie-ins when he does that, when he does a side chest. I mean, from the for me, it's worth, oh, I hate to say it, but his worst pose is frontal bicep because it just looks, for sure. the lats are too high, the waist is long, there's a bit of distension. It just kind of, he looks horrible in that pose, but the side shots, he looks absolutely fantastic. His back shots are pretty good. Um, to me, he always reminds me a little bit of, um, I put it in my MD column last year, so it reminds me a little bit of like a, a Brazilian Dennis Wolf. A lot of people are, I think, what was the comparison? And he's a big dude as well. I mean, look at that shot yes. there. The um, sorry, pointing the one there where he's doing the arm shot. Hang on, you're right there, the bottom, bottom right there, bottom right. Yeah, not that yeah. one, bottom right. Just go back. That, that one there. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. I mean, you can see, like yeah. that's that's a that's a big guy. That's like branch Warren thickness. Mm -hmm. It's just from the front. It's, and it's quite a big fall. It's not like. It's not like where just the abs are poor and you're kind of like you stop thinking about it after those two shots. Like that's a it's it's a major flaw to have that will linger in your linger in at least my mind when he goes through the other comparisons. And like and then I'm constantly watching it. So we can't do anything about it because it will be in the judges and it's at least in my mind, you know, anytime I look at William. Yeah realistically i mean we we kind of well we're pretty educated guess and guessing who the top two is who do you think's got third do you think Vito or william martins will get third um right now i do there you go i think oh man i think good Vito doesn't have the clearest abs either but his midsection is a lot better as a whole um mm -hmm. but his back is also last time we saw him which to be fair was two years ago it was yeah. abysmal um Definitely not a pro level back at all when he turned pro. Um, not even close. So I don't know. William is definitely the more tested guy, but Good Vito has had okay. two years to improve. I, I don't know. Like the stomach I, I, is an issue. I wasn't blown away when I saw him when his pro show. You know, when he sorry pro debut. Uh, sorry pro qualifier. I wasn't. I was like, oh, he's another Instagram guy. But you know, again, I might be pulled into the trap because the recent pictures and videos I've seen, he looks. Freaking awesome. I just hope. I mean, um, Miguel said he's he get was he get about 15 pounds heavier uh, approximately. Um, and if he does, if he does look, if he is that improved and he is seriously improved, then I mean, like for me, I I wasn't blown away when I saw the amateur. For me, it was a bit of a damp squib. But like I said, the photos I've seen, you know, um, based upon that, he looks like he's made serious improvements. Serious yeah. improvements. The thing he's got is, a tiny little waist, and I mean, could he be like, you know, like I said, we had Rubiel, Crizo, Nick Walker. Every year, there seems to be a new, you know, sensation. Yeah. And I think if he's if he really has improved and he's really worked his ass off in the last couple of years, which I'm sure he has, then I think um, I think uh, I think Williams in trouble. 
The thing is, I don't know how much to trust Good Vito's photos. He has been <laughs> no, called, no. He's been called out for the Photoshop in the yeah, past. Yeah, one of them. He's one of them. But luckily, this was actually taken from a video. Okay. So when was that? This this was posted four hours ago by the Brazilian Bodybuilding News Network over there. Um, okay. it looks flat. Dang, really flat. So, I'm not blown away by this. I yeah, I thought the, from the front is is good. He obviously makes a great first impression from the front. Whoa. Um, it's but nice. you know he's one that you can definitely pick. He hasn't really brought it all together. He has most of the things he needs there. Yeah. Um, and he's on his way, but I think he just needs to continue pulling all these things together. Better back. I, I'm interested to see his conditioning most because I think the back is going to take a lot a while to improve. He started out with a big deficit, but yeah. the condition is something he can improve fairly quickly. Do, I, do you know what? I think Nick Walker's put a lot of unnecessary pressure on the guys that followed him because that year when he won the Arnold, the New York Pro, got fifth Olympia, and he was mm -hmm. just, you know, he was like, he just got fourth at Chicago Pro the year before. Like, he made such a splash after turning pro, which you don't really see. I feel like it's made, put so much pressure on these guys now. Like I said, you had Chris Owen 22, won the Amateur Olympia, then he Prague, then he mm -hmm. got 12th at Olympia, you know, and then you had Rubio last year, third in his pro debut, called out with Samson and bloody uh, Chris Owen. And now... I think there's a lot of weight expect of expectation on this guy, you know? Um, yes. Yeah. Did, didn't he pull out of a show last year, wasn't he? He pulled out a show. Couldn't get his visa. Couldn't Fell off get the, the stage as well. I thought there was a lot of excuses that were a bit fishy to me. Um, you know, I don't actually, now that I think about it, I don't know if that he was... Fell off a... the stage. Probably fell off the stage. Well, he jumped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they reckon. I, I don't know. Sometimes I'm a little bit suspicious when there's all these different uh, fantastical excuses coming out. You know, I'm not saying, I'm not calling him a liar, you know what I mean? But... I that was like... after the fact, I think. I think the, uh, the guest yeah. posing debacle was after he had pulled out of that show. Debacle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so incident. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I, I just, I, yeah, I, I feel I feel kind of like, you know, because you can, you can blag it by, you know, with pictures and stuff like that and making excuses. But, you know, if he, if he comes out and he's not, you know, he's not he's at least improved from when he turned pro a couple of years ago. It's going to be, um, you know, but then again, like I said, it's Nick Walker's probably to blame for being so good so mm -hmm. quick. It's like, I think sometimes the weight of expectation on these guys, I think it's too much. It's like, you know, look how it took Ronnie Coleman like six years, you know, from his first Olympia to winning it, you know, Brandon Curry, you know, like it took several years. And I think yeah. sometimes they, they, you know, some of these fans, they think that um, their guy's going to win the Olympia within the first year of turning pro. And it's like, just give these guys a couple of years to kind of, you know, because I'm not saying Good Vito isn't good. He's good. He's clearly good, and he's obviously going to be improved, hopefully, from his from uh, turning pro two years ago. But he is a guy that you know might take a few years to really get going because he's got mm -hmm. the frame, he's got the freaky body parts, got a nice small waist. But um, at the moment, I'm kind of I, I need to see him on stage before I can make a real judgment. Absolutely. I mean, especially going up against someone more seasoned like a William Martins, so who you know is going to be big and in condition. Okay, so do you think? So who do you have between these two? Because I think they're going to probably bring up the rear of the top four. Um, I, I'm purely because I've um, I've seen him on. I think William will, will take third. I think he'll, I, I, I think, think he'll that's take, just yeah. the safer yeah, decision. I, also, wasn't William working with Chad Nichols? I think so. I think yeah, so. They're not anymore. Not anymore. Mm. So I, I, I'm always suspicious of guys as well that top coaches a lot. I think that's Ch always a red. That's always a alarm bell for me. Chad always coaches the most obscure guys nowadays i mean he just kind of there's no there doesn't seem to really be a theme you know like he he obviously had great success with ronnie coleman but then <laughs> like recently he's like well william bonak for a year and then now i just heard the other day that he, he was coaching william martins and then he kind of yeah maybe they just get too busy i mean i know when i if i try and get a hold of chad nichols he he said the best time to get a hold of him is like 4 a.m my time like he works crazy hours. Like Ronnie's like that. He like I'll get messages from Ronnie in the morning, and it's like it's like three four a.m. He said that's he said that's the chance when he just when he gets his like his, his emails and his, his you know his business stuff done and mm -hmm. you know and, and stuff like that. So it's, it, with some of these people have their weird working hours because maybe they're so busy and distracted in the day with their families and their other jobs and the other sure. things they do. You know the time they like to sit down and focus on things like their coaching and stuff like that is at these obscure times. So I don't know, but um, yeah, who knows. And then uh, Tony O'Burton, who threw his hat, not at the last minute, but 
later into the to the up the um the lead into the show uh because he originally was just going to do the new york pro um but then he was i think he probably always thought he was going to do the arnold brazil yeah. because to be early it's one thing to be early a week or two before but he was it's over it's going to be a month and a half at least because it's just this weekend and new york is mid mid uh may so you know right. so so did you say that he originally said he was just going to come and try and defend the new york pro title I'm pretty sure. I mean, he probably okay. would have had to that pick something sense. up after that. Yeah. Um, just because, just because Nick Walker's doing that show now. Yeah. It's, well, <laughs> yeah. It's like, um, it's just a, it's a guest posing for Nick really, isn't it? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Some people like to hype Tonio up, at least for that one. I think this one's going to be a little bit more competitive, him and Raphael, um, yeah. but him versus Nick, it's just, I don't, I what don't if, see um, it. What if Tony was doing Detroit next week? Uh, Fuad has, called a lot of people to try to get them to do it uh john is apparently out now john Delarosa is apparently out um yeah, i spoke to i spoke to patrick yesterday because we were doing live the um well we're recording the the power run and um and he said john's out. i said no no i think he's out i said in fact let me message patrick to her now and then at the end of the recording i checked my phone and i read out the message and he says no 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 he's leaving it till later in the year to you know but um yeah i mean and then i think James is probably should do it. I, there's no reason not to, because he's literally saying he's, he he uh, was putting on a story the other day that he he's staying in prep just to quote push himself, which is all fine and dandy. But for a guy like James that kind of needs to focus on peaking, I would kind of caution. If I was in this corner, I'd be like, I'd really be asking the question, why? Why not just pull back for now, or you, try to do something now or, or pull back? Because there's no reason like pushing any further especially when your main issue is kind of cracking that code on show day i tell you what though that was the best james i've seen at the the arnold uk finals it looked fantastic mm -hmm. really good i mean really like samson dramatically from the pre-judging the day before but then again that's compared versus watching online and photos to in the flesh and mm -hmm. like you know it was it was a night and day difference and i don't know whether it was because i've not actually i've got no you know, comparison. I can't make a comparison because I wasn't there the first day. But honestly, the finals, he looked absolutely fantastic. So for Detroit, um, I don't see why Tonio doesn't throw his hat in the ring. Sure. Um, but for now, it's kind of good. Vito will be there. Um, okay. Yeah, and then sure. Martin. Martin, Martin yeah. yeah. But I mean, I, I'm I'm really pulling for Martin. I think he is going to be one of the brighter stars of 2024. He got stitched up, didn't he, with an Arnold invite? I wonder what he did to piss him off. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't really know because I thought that was he really was, weird. He was posting; he wanted to do it. It's like, why do we just? I don't understand why, especially with knowing that the guys drop out. And you know, like the other year when, you know, and then bloody uh, Rami and everyone jumped in at the last minute. It's like I think the RDK is in danger of having. I know they're bumping up the prize money, but I feel like they need to start inviting more guys. I mean, they that was their yeah. excuse for getting rid of the two twelve in after twenty eighteen. It's like oh, only seven guys turned up. Well, how many did you invite? Well, nine. It's like, well, invite fifteen then. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it doesn't matter if you've got 13 or all 15 turn up. It's never going to be, you're still going to be in control of how many show up. Not like the bloody classic Olympia in 22 and there was like 59 guys because sure. there were so many shows, you know, because, you know, it's for, for a lot of the promoters, it's cheaper to put on these, you know, the, the sanction fee and everything, the prize money is less and the classic class is popular. So sometimes, you know, they've got to really, you know, but the Arnold's got full control because it's an invitational. Yeah. Um. So back to Tonio. What are his chances of defeating um, not the reigning Arnold South America because Beirut took it in 2023, mm -hmm. um, but a Arnold South America champion because Raphael won in 22. Uh, what are the chances of Tonio defeating Raphael? I don't see him beating Raphael. Raphael is really like, I mean, what he brought at the Arnold of Columbus was absolutely mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I was speaking to Neil Hill a lot before that and um and I was thinking oh, how's he looking and he's oh he looks amazing and Neil always bigs his guys up because I see you know that's his that's his he's very passionate about what he does and but I kind of like in the back of my mind I was like yeah you're gonna say that you know even though I you know I trust Neil I've known Neil since 94 for like 30 years you know mm -hmm. but if it's still I was thinking that like, yeah but when he came out I was like holy shit you know there's a guy that from his 10th place at the 2022 Olympia he really leveled up he really like in fact I think I, I said it on uh, um with Ron the other day I said 
those, I think, you know, when they always tr uh, traditionally bring out the top two at the end, Samson had, you know that that's what, you knew before the show that it was a highly likely chance that that was going to be the top. I think yeah. I think they deserve to bring Rafi out because I think he was really close to Samson and Columbus. I think he was really, really close. And I think he deserved that to, to sort of, you know, that uh, think out about the think outside the box a little bit and give him that opportunity because for me, his side shots beat both Hadi and Samson at that show. You don't lose anything by already comparing guys that are already there. You know, like yeah. we're already in the auditorium. Why not? Why not? We're already here. Who cares when it goes on a little bit longer? Like three minutes extra for a call out? It's it, give them the time of day. It wasn't like Jay and Ronnie and everybody else. Do you know what I mean? Or Phil and mm. Kai and everybody else. I mean, yeah, we all knew that it was going to come down to Samson Hadi statistically two and three sure. at the Olympia, Mr. Olympia, Arnold Classic champion, defend Arnold Classic. You knew that the, the, the less one of them really messed up or someone, you know, did a, did a 2003 Ronnie Coleman, that was going to be the top two. But I honestly feel like they should have, I mean, it's just, it's just my opinion at the, the day, but um, I feel like, um, I think, I feel like Raphael really leveled up. He was about, I think about 15 pounds heavier. Um, uh, yeah. And his 15, shoulders, yeah. Well, his shoulders look The shoulders, beautiful. arms and chest for sure. Yeah. The shoulders yeah, that to upper waist region. and, and there was all the lines and the detail and the shots. Yes. Shooting his, you know, I, for me, like I, if I, I would, if I was a head judge and one of my judges put Raphael first and he said purely because of the, the shoulder thing, I wouldn't chastise him. I'd be like, I'd be supportive of that, you know, because I think stuff like that needs to be called out, you know, and the fact that Raphael came in with such a clean, nice, you know, like aesthetic balance. I mean, he ticks, he ticks every, he ticks every box that Samson has, but he bought better condition. So I think, I mean, look at him. He looks, I mean, he's a lot sharper than yeah. Samson now. There you the can side. see the, the delt thing. I mean, there you go. There you go. Look, at, I mean, for me, I mean, I think he takes that shot. I would argue, even though I, the, I, I know we're harping on the delt, <laughs> I, 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 I kind of like Hottie in this one. Yeah, um, he doesn't fit actually that. And you can't see the shine in his shoulders either. So it looks yeah. like, yeah, yeah, I just, um, I just really like Raphael's shape. And I think I, I love it when guys show up, you know, we haven't seen them for a while and, and, you, and you don't know whether they've been working hard or just pissing around on the beach, you know, and you, as soon as he came out, it's like, yeah, this guy's been busy and he's been, Neil's been absolutely beasting him. Also, I think we're going to see all time best Raphael because this was the first show that him and Neil had done together. And, yeah. you know, and, and it takes a while to work out somebody's body sometimes, because you know, everyone's body's different. It takes a couple of shows to try and, and the thing is, there's more pressure on the, the Columbus than there is for the Brazil. I don't know. Yeah, actually, yeah, actually sure. I don't know. Actually, I don't know because Brazil, you know what they're like with the national. <laughs> That's pride true. And, and it's kind of his show to lose at this point. You know, people had high expectations for Rafa at uh, Ohio, but I don't think anyone expected him to win. And if they did, it was like, oh, there's a there's a chance, you know. But here they we we kind of are expecting him to win. I think all of us. I think um, I think he's going to move up at the Olympia if he keeps up with his rate of improvements. I think um, I could see him. I don't know whether about top six because AJ pulled me up on this and I said, "Oh, I could see him moving up to top six this year." And then AJ listed all the names and I said, "Actually, now I think of it, you, yeah. know, you raised a good point. I, I could see him though. I could see him sixth to eighth, sure. maybe like seventh, eighth. I could see him. You know, I could definitely see him um, up there because I don't know whether he can beat an Andrew Jack or a." Um, you know, the, the Nick Walkers. And I think he could have beat Andrew Jack at the Olympia last year. I don't think Olympia Andrew was that good. I think Hunter beat him, quite frankly. Correct. In fact, I had Chris ahead of um, uh, Andrew because Andrew was really off. Andrew yeah, was off. for sure. But he's just so physically. Like, I didn't really get the Andrew Jack hype until I saw him at the 22, 2022 Olympia. And he had um, a COVID or a cold or sort of flu. Yeah, or he was sick. He, yeah. Yeah, he couldn't even speak when I get, and he was, he, his hearing was gone and he was, he looked really like, looked sick. You know? And I mean, I, he, with that all said, when I saw him, I was like, I get it now because he just, your eyes are, sometimes it's like with Wesley when he did the Arnold Columbus. Uh -huh. As soon as he came out, my eyes were. I said on the live watch party, I said, you know, you can, you can hear my thoughts live as the live stream's going live. Yes, I said, my, eyes are just draw my eyes are drawn to Wesley because there's just something that draws the eye because we have our criteria of what we consider a, a winning physique. And yeah. the same, the same was happening. Well, it was the same, but my eyes were drawn to Andrew because I kind of like with Hunter, I didn't get the hype until I actually physically saw them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay, I see why everyone's raving about this guy. So you think Rafa? going to win almost oh, yeah. almost straight definitely first, straight first straight first well luckily for you i have put together this comparison for us <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> here's one i prepared earlier here's a here, here's from here's a little uh takeaway here this is 
good veto um tonio and then rafa i'm not going to show all the slides because this video will come out later um Have you uh, i think it'd be a different story though if you if they were uh, stood the other way because sure. Tonio's Tonio's back is up. That was one of the most shocking things I saw at the Olympia last year. When yes, when Tonio turned to the back, I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah. This. I and mean, also he, his lighting is trash in at the Olympia. So yeah, so take it for what you will. But I think of these front shots, both of them. I think good veto. If he's going to win any shots, it's going to be the front ones. Yeah, he's particularly good from the side. To be honest, after from what I've saw from what I've seen. But, That's fair. That's fair. Um, but from the front, I mean, this is already one of the better structures in the IFBB, just because, like, that's real. That this this is a real video. This isn't Photoshop. This is taken from yeah. his actual thing. Like, you make a good you you make a good argument there. Um, yeah. So, how did you, did you say how? Remind me how tall Good Vito is. I didn't know, and so I know he's around Tony Ohio. Like, he's actually a f on the shorter end. You know, I don't oh, think okay. he's five six. Excellent. Um, so I just, I said in the video, I said, well, I'll just make them the same height for simplicity's sake. I just kind of <laughs> threw them in at the last minute because yeah. I, I think it is a top two battle, but I was like, oh, I'll throw in a wild card. I have semi good photos for him. I'll throw it in. But I think even if he is shorter, taller, whatever, I think he makes a good argument to even outright, he has the capability to, to win this pose. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. This pose. Yeah, based upon what I'm looking at, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't argue with that. I want to jump to the. Let's see. It's good what you've done with all these pictures. I like it. It's, it's really good for a uh, good for good. For, I mean, look at the sass. Not a good side chest though, is it? No, and I was surprised about that because you know we think about good veto. I uh... think unrefined mass. I think he's huge, but he just needs some more refinement. But in the side chest, I, I even with Tonio, who's probably giving up a little he's i wouldn't say less muscular but probably on scale weight good veto is probably a bit bigger but i oh, mean yeah, with yeah. with his pop you know with that dexter jackson kind of roundness he's De uh dexter beat guys all day long much bigger than him you know yeah. so that was his calling card that's why i think tonio's kind of so well thought of because his his physique is very reminiscent of that the long waist and the, like, even just the mm -hmm. you know if you squint i mean you could be forgiven it's like a, like a yeah. dexter jackson stunt double but um I, like I said, with Vito, if he gets third here, I think that's a win for him and a very, very good pro debut, and he should be disappointed. Yeah. Um, do you think maybe he should keep doing on more shows, or do you think he should do what Carlos did last year, Carlos Thomas Jr., just do and just shut it down and then get a gauge for his starting point and then go take a year off? What do you think? Um, I would have to see. If he's like, I'm kind of waiting on the back and the, and the side shots mainly. Like, if they're improved, I would say... At least do Detroit. I think regardless, do Detroit. Um, yeah. Just to get your name out there. He's not going to qualify this year, though, is he? I, yeah. As much as as much as everyone's hyping him up, yeah. it's going to be like this year, the calendar year, and how it's set up, um, and how many how many new guys there are, how many good new guys there are. This year yeah. is going to be yeah. extremely competitive. I don't know exactly what it is because it can't just be new guys the way the calendar's set up. I, it's just very competitive this year. In, mm -hmm. So I don't, I would say it's more likely that he doesn't. If I was him, do this, do Detroit and then shut it down. Get your, get your pictures, get your feedback, get the people talking about you. There's no need to, there's no benefit to him doing four, five, six shows or to try and qualify. I mean, that's, you know, because if the points thing was here, he probably, if he was getting thirds and fourths, he'd probably try and get through on points. But I think sometimes, like I said, you know, like Nick Walker kind of spoiled it for the rest of them because he became so good so quick. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'm from the 90s area. Like I, I followed the sport where it took, some guys took, years to qualify do you know what i mean and these were good really top of the line bodybuilders you know it's um but now there's, there's, there's some of these guys they're so good right out the gate it's like it's um the pressure's on them to the next guy to do exactly the mm -hmm. same or it's seen as a massive failure you know like when rafael got eighth at the san marino they um they switched his coaches and it's like well the guy's got 30 pound muscle on a year he's had first court he's like 24 years old he's had first call out with Hadi shuban cedric Reville, and brandon curry and it's it was it was they were disappointed. His team were disappointed, and I just think God, that's incredible. He took eighth place, first call out, you know. Um, yeah. But just just give these kinds, just you know, because I, sometimes I feel like a lot of these athletes there's a lot of pressure on them, especially with some of these Brazilians. I mean, they really expect oh, yeah. them to do well straight away. I think it's a they pay them well, but at the same time, it, there comes it's a double edged sword because becomes because there comes a real weight of expectation and they expect you to do well and qualify the first year or you're out, you know, or you're, or you're a failure. You have to work harder, you know? Um, would you say Raphael wins the shot? 
I think yeah. it's, it's oh, yeah, just yeah, yeah. quality and everything. Yeah, by far, I, by far. We can go the back contest. to the front front double. Um, Rafael. Good, yeah, Rafael. Okay. Um, but Vito, then, like you said, Vito looks bloody good in that shot there. He does. And then in the back, um, good Vito. It's not even a question. Um, <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's quite pitiful. But I think both back shots, um, at least this one. I think we, we'll just talk about this one for now. Tonio is winning quite. I would say it's quite clear than me. I think Raphael has the delts in the arms going for him cause just because he's bigger and has, he has a lot of width. But for detail and the nitty gritty, I mean, I'd have Tonio pretty clearly here. Agree. Okay. And then I think it gets a little bit murkier when you go to the rear lat just because Raphael's a bit bigger. And obviously there's more width that comes with that. But I still have Tonio winning this one. He has those fuller lats, a, a lot like Dexter. Like a lot he's like dense. Him. He looks dense there. Yeah. I mean, he's really smoking uh, Raphael there. Mm-hmm. And Raphael's, I mean, like Neil said to me, he said, no, he's got a lot of work on his back. You know, we really, really trying to focus on that now. And he knows that that's the area he needs to bring up. And also, I know I hate to say it, but, you know, we expect shredded glutes now. We do, you know. And if it's sometimes it's not even to do with conditions, it's to do with development. That's why a lot of guys do lunges and they train glutes because back in the 90s, it was just quads and hams and no one thought about training glutes. You know, the glutes got stimulated by doing everything else. But now, I mean, look at Derek Lunsford. Derek Lunsford can be, you know, lack detail in other areas, but like if they see you've got shredded glutes, the judge is like, oh, he's in condition. And he is in condition, but it's like the glutes are such a gauge and such a marker now for condition. If you don't have developed shredded glutes like you know even when you know you're not even flexing then it's like you're seen as not being in condition and i mean Raphael is clearly in condition there sure Sorry, you know rant actually over, rant over <laughs> i think that's uh derek has the good glutes because the honey rambod uh special he, he honey swears by the step mill which i don't know how much <laughs> like honey still swears by the step mill my my, my girlfriend because i'm literally right here and i don't want to turn it around because i want to knock the webcam but i've got a, a, like a proper star trek gym tricks gym style treadmill right behind the curtains in the studio where you see I've had my treadmill. I do a cardio every morning. And Laura, my Laura, my girlfriend, she's prepping for a show and she still she uses that at night, but in the daytime she goes because our gym's only like four minutes away, Legends Gym. Yeah. She goes there and she goes on the step mill, she says, because there's nothing like it for getting the quad separated and the you know and the, the, the 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 condition and the detail and the glutes. Yeah, a lot of people say that's bro science, and I was like that for a while, you know, it's just it's like not, oh it's not it's not that's 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 dumb. But then I see like people are winning Mr. Olympias because they did the stair mill over the <laughs> over the treadmill i mean jay cutler swore by it because he was trained by hottie in 09 um and i think 2010 and i mean phil heath always did that i believe or i think phil like the elliptical well it, it hits the quads it hits the quads so it's gonna you know stimulate that area do you know what i mean i mean i i you know you think about a treadmill even when i'm on an incline every morning i'm not really there's not much movement it's just in my hips really do you know what i mean there's not actual muscular stimulation mm-hmm. but when you do a step mill, it's more for me it's more like an exercise rather than cardio just to get the heart rate up and burn body fat, you know. I tell you what, though, you I tell you, I'm impressed though. You really know your stuff. I'm you're you're very you know you've really followed. Oh. It. I'm, I'm quite impressed with the amount of. Uh, I've been picking up a lot of things. I've been thinking, shit, this guy. You know, you. I think you're going to do. Well, I think you're going to do well in this industry, man. I think you. Oh, um, I appreciate you, that because you know your shit and you're you're very objective as well. You know, so I think uh, yeah, you've um, you should get covering some shows as well because I think you've got a good eye. Uh, I I I really appreciate that, Giles, but. I want to get to the last pose and then we're going to end this uh, podcast. Most muscular. I had this as the closest pose of the comparison, except not between good veto. I think he does some posing things wrong. I think he's leaning forward too much. Um, there there's, there's, and the photo is bad. The photo is bad for one, but you can tell there's nothing yeah. going on in the chest, the triceps and arms and delts. They kind of flatten out. Um, I think some posing would actually help good veto go a long way. He's his posing needs to come up. A yeah, I, I like the way he does a frontal bicep with a leg out. But I mean, I remember analyzing him with uh, Milos on Global Muscle last year, or the, maybe the year before. And he was saying, you know, he lacked a little bit of separation in the chest and shoulders, which basically, like like Derek Lunsford, just comes through development and time spent. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just it's just targeting those areas and then coming back improved. So, like, he's a, he's a diamond in the rough, Vito. I think, I mean, a couple of years, if he keeps working hard, he could be very, very dangerous. I think he's just, like, what, 26, too, or something oh, like that? Wow, he's a baby. He's I don't baby. think. I mean, he definitely has a baby face, so that may that may be swaying my decision. I could have just pulled that out of my ass. I'm not too sure, but I'm pretty sure he's under 30. Wow. Um, well, he's got all the time in the world, then. not he? So, and he's, he's, sure. he's, moved, he's moved to Brazil, so... And yes, they, they, they look after their guys, man. Like I said, they expect a lot, but they... I remember, I remember hearing... 
what bloody Rafael was on back in 2017. This is when Brazilian bodybuilding was just before the split in 2018 and things were really starting to explode. And I remember hearing like Patrick Tour telling me, he said, just I can't believe the, the support these guys get. Mm-hmm. I mean, he went into detail about like if the girlfriends want Botox or implants and stuff, the sponsor will pay for it. And, you know, with athletes, he'd be working with other athletes and stuff like that, you know, and they get all their like, you know, pharmaceutical GH and stuff like that. I've been hearing stories like that. You know, you know, they're really not just given like a big chunk of money every month. You know, they actually get properly looked after yeah. like, you know, like proper sports stars, you know, like which like football players, you know, with their sports massage, everything's taken care of, you know, their food, yeah. everything. I mean, they've literally just got to eat, sleep, train, you know, it's great. And I, I love it. hearing that about Brazilian bodybuilding. It's, it's nice to see. I wish I kind of, um, it's, uh, hopefully other countries will follow suit on that because they, um, they deserve it, you know? It's kind of becoming like Kuwait 2.0 in a lot of ways. Yeah, you know? yeah, I was just um, thinking that. Well, yeah. But yeah. I think American culture, like a lot of the West, they kind of have a, um, not maybe, maybe not self-centered, but it's very like, it's you, maybe a coach, maybe a trainer. That's it. Like these guys have like teams around them. Like in Dubai, you don't even literally, put up your own literally. weights. You don't I, even I put was, up your own I, weights in Dubai. I was raising an eyebrow and people say, oh, I'm going to speak to my team. Like, yeah, okay, right. It's just you, you know? And then no, you've actually in Brazil, like they, they do. I mean, they, I mean, that, they're specialists you know. for everyone. <laughs> right. They've got is, a trainer the or two is, or it's crazy. That's how that, that's how these guys keep leveling up. And we get to, we see the best. I mean, look at what horse MD, like Marcelo De Angelis has done in the last couple of years. I mean, I thought he was going to go, cl- I thought he should go classic. Cause when he turned pro as a super heavyweight and he was like a like four pounds over classic, I was like, Bumstead's in trouble. This guy, hit, and then he tried, and he didn't because his body just wanted to grow. And then you saw how how much his body wanted to grow by how he looked at Romania last year. You know when yeah. he took like third, and then you know this year he didn't look as good. But that was just a matter of conditioning. But that guy, I mean, how much muscle he's put on in two years? You know, yeah. I mean, he's taller he's, guy too. He's he's huge. Yeah. Um, and awesome. then this <clears throat> shot, Tonio versus Raphael. Um, for me, what I said in the video is Tonio has a lot of pop. Shorter guy, more compact. That helps. Um, but Raphael is just so much Beautiful. wider. And I think, like, I've even made Tony a little bit too tall in this one, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I, I think I think on stage this would be it's, – it's just not going to – it's going to be one of the more competitive shots, but I just think the structure, now that Raphael's filling it out, it's going to be too much for Tony. I mean, I'm a, I'm a conditioning snob. Um, sure. But I also like to see, like, I mean, Tony's in great condition there, but look at the separation in, yes. in Raphael. I mean, the, the separation, the detail, the the deep, like, the bigger shoulders, but, you know, the, the lines are there. You can see all three heads of the, well, in most poses, you can see the three heads of the delts, which is mm-hmm. my, that's my, that's my, my litmus test. Tell. You know, the, yeah, the yeah. readable bicep, they turn to the back and you can only see one big blurry head. You know, that's, mm-hmm. that means they're doing that, you know, because it's some, um, Things like that, they they should they 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 are taken into account by the judges because sometimes I get criticised for criticising that, and I'm like, yeah, but I'm only saying that because the judges will see shines on your delts. They do. They will see, you know, if you put crap in your triceps, you know, because it'll blur the separation, and mm-hmm. they'll they'll basically it's just, if, if the guy next to you is as good and he doesn't have that, they you know it's, it's you've literally given an advantage to him, you know, so. That's why I'm glad that Raphael has got Neil Hill because Neil is smart. He knows what constitutes a good physique. Do you know what I mean? Look what he did with Flex Lewis. <clears throat> yeah. Quality. So, um, who would you give this pose to exactly? Oh, Raphael, you... Raphael, all day. Long. Raphael. Okay. So in that video, I'm not to give away the conclusion because, like I said, it's coming out tonight. But I basically said <laughs> my my mantra for this: bigger. If if most things are equal, like conditioning, muscularity, um, if all else is even close or equal, the bigger bigger is better. We've seen that time and time again. As long as Raphael doesn't blow his condition, or as long as Tonio doesn't has it just like blown up magically overnight, mm. it's just bigger is usually better if things are close or equal. And don't forget that Tonio is going to be on a bit of a roll because you know when you see guys win shows, like say they win their first show, and every show after that they because they're riding high on the confidence. It's like the wind it gives them a testosterone boost. It gives them sure. a, a confidence. It gives them that sort of acknowledgement and sometimes it opens up opportunities for sponsors because they've won something so yeah. you know they they don't have to go and do pt for 10 hours a day you know they can just do it one day a week or stuff, stuff like that it, it mm. plays a difference you know it usually gives them gets them sort of on a roll you know so um with tonio getting eighth place at olympia i mean that he's gonna you know he's and also won the new york pro so he's gonna be looking to defend his title there even if nick walker's there he's gonna be sure. going all out for that so I think um, how many, how many how, sorry, hang on, is it four months, five months since the Olympia. Yeah, I think at so, this point. 
Yeah, he could have improved. He could, I mean, I could see him maybe, you know, even if he came in like three, four pounds heavier on a guy, you know, five foot six or whatever with that kind of frame, you know, that's going to be, that's going to be impressive. So it's not necessarily a slam dunk from Raphael, which I think it will be. Um, so let's see what Tonio brings, you know? I mean, to me, Muxel's <laughs> going to show up differently on everyone's frame. But to me, I don't think this is like, it's like, oh, wow, he's improved. Like, I don't think we're going to see... He just hasn't had the time, but we're not going to see a Raphael 2022 to 2024 transformation on uh, Antonio. I don't even think we'll see anything close to that. Maybe in condition, maybe a little bit refinements, but because he's he's good at that. But I don't think we're going to see like a, a like a massive overhaul like we saw from Raphael. Not even close. I'd say next time I do hack squats, I'm going to visualize that sweep on his left leg. Look For at it. Sure. That's, that is basically what sure. what I'm going to what that's what I'm going to be thinking about attaining when i'm doing yeah. like you know heavy hack squats do you know what i mean because look oh yeah at that. i look at this i mean that's that's that looks like it's been photoshopped that sweet and you know it hasn't been mm -mm. look at it incredible yeah he just like given that I'd, I'd like to see more chest on him yeah Especially he's just just giving... to, just to match that crazy back sorry sorry interrupt. no 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 you're fine he's just <clears> giving up a lot of structure and overall size to Raphael. and as Raphael, like you said even the conditioning from the arnold was good enough for me um <sighs> Beautiful. If he gets Beautiful. a little bit better. That, that's what what is Tonio winning on? Because he doesn't have better shape. The muscularity pound for pound may be closer, but maybe back and completeness, that could be maybe an argument plus the condition. I just don't see it. I just don't think there's a path to victory, personally. Yeah. Very narrow yeah. one. Very narrow. I mean, if he if he I mean he's probably not gonna beat Nick Walker, let's be honest. He's so. might get beat by Raphael. Um, I, I, and if he's eighth place Olympia, he's probably just going to keep going and going until he gets a qualification. Mm -hmm. um, so here's a guy who's probably going to have to do it. Do you know, I, what do you think about the point system? I think they should bring it back. I think, they, I think the way they need, they, they're doing it currently needs entirely overhauled. I think I, I would change it completely. I would, I would look into maybe tiering shows. And I, I, some people would say, well, they're not going to do the shows that don't directly qualify you, but you can say, well, we're going to have some smaller shows where you, if you win two, you qualify. Um, that gets guys competing more, um, mm. but then we'll also have some shows that you, you qualify straight away for like the New York pro Arnold, bigger shows, Texas pro, um, but right. other shows you have to win two. They could try something like that. I'm not a huge fan of the a win two show. Oh, I don't like that idea. Yeah. Yeah, it's, oh, that's, that's really. Can imagine the anticlimax of winning a show, and then they go, "I'm sorry, mate. If you want to qualify for it, you got to do it again." I, I see it, it the opposite what if, way. What if it's their fourth show? What if it's their fourth show? Now, so I like. I thought you were hinting at, say, if Tonio gets second to Nick Walker at the New York Pro, and he's the defending champion, and eighth place at the Olympia, he's technically not going to qualify. So, I mean, I'd like to think that he could qualify. What? Uh, sorry, I completely. No, I think. I mean, it's very. Uh, no disrespect, but it's just if you have trouble qualifying for the Olympia, it kind of is. I'm coming from the position where I want to see tighter Olympia lineups. I don't right. want to see 30 guys. I want to see 20 max. I love that. <laughs> and it's just <laughs> total opposite, mate. I mean, like 59 in the classic was a bit of a piss take. I mean, because there was oh, guys sure. in their best ever on stage for like 30 seconds and that was it, you know? And it's just—I mean, that was—that was a bit ridiculous. But I think um, I kind of wish they bring the points back. You know, I do for these guys like Tonio that might not win the Brazil, not, might not win the New York Pro, and I don't want to see have to go do four, five, six shows to, just to get a win in some in a show just to qualify. Um, I think as long as they, I'm okay with the point system. The problem with the point system was when it was in play. That's when we got a lot of guys. We just got an overflow, and I don't think the IFBB wants that as well. Maybe they do. But three or four, three or four guys, though, it's not massive amount. When there's already 25 in the Olympia, yeah. to me it is. Oh, no, no. And then you've got the bloody other classic that's got like eight, nine guys on stage. It's mm -hmm. just two. It's, it's really, yeah. The 2022 Olympia was a shit show. I mean, it just went, it just went <laughs> on for forever. Quite oh. as a viewer, I would have turned it off, quite frankly. Really? I, wow. It just, well, I would have gone to bed because, <laughs> because I, I'm over here on the East Coast. Right. Was, well, I, w I was there, right? And I was like, because I'm a big fan of Vlad. And uh, uh, Vlad Sorochko. Yeah, Sorochko. Yeah. And he'd really worked hard because the year before he didn't get his visa. And there was a bit, I was, I was interviewing him a lot. I was following his storyline, trying to support him, making, you know, kind of get a, get a timeline of events, you know. And I was, I was happy when he qualified and he won in Italy. And it was Italy? Italy or something. Yeah. When he got his qualification. 
And then the night show, because um, I know we didn't do too well at the pre-show, didn't get some great call-outs. Yeah. And then I was sat there in the second row, sat behind Sean Carida and uh, Michael Jai White, another guy at Batman, Dark Knight, uh, Blood and Bone, the actor, the martial arts guy. And okay. anyway, and, and I'm like, I'm, I'm sat with my girlfriend, Lauren, and we're watching the show, and then all the lineup comes out, and um, I was like, oh, we're going to get to see Vlad. And, mm-hmm. and I looked behind me, and he was sat behind me. <laughs> <the audience. laughs> I went, what are you doing? And then he, t- he started to tell me, and then the music came on and I was like, oh, I'll tell you later. And I never got to speak to him again. So I still, I still don't know what happened, but it was like something, like, yeah. So I just thought, you know, I, I wanted to see him on stage, even if it was just for a couple of poses in a few minutes, you know, but um, I've completely forgotten my point now. What I, was talking about. I think we were just talking about too many guys at the Olympia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You he didn't up... like it. Yeah, he didn't like it. Well, I mean, with the on stage at 11, I think that's why Rami, I think the bigger guys, you know, coming on so late because the show was so long, if you noticed, it didn't affect Derek and Hadi because mm-hmm. backstage there was no space. Um, but William Bonnack told me that they were told to be there for six, be on stage for by the latest seven o'clock. Now, they weren't even on stage till half 10, 11 o'clock. And because the yeah. backstage area was so small, you know, normally if you're like, oh, guys, we're running a couple of hours late. Go get, you know, you get your bag, you get you, you put your, and you just lay up, put your headphones on, and you just zone out, and you just, you know, just, you know, lie yeah. like, a, like a bloody vampire and just try and zone out. But they couldn't do that. Coaches weren't allowed backstage. None of them, very few of them had enough food because they, they didn't plan for it because they yeah. expected to be on stage four hours earlier. So I think the bigger guys missing that kind of thing can, can hurt them more. And I think that's one of the reasons why Derek, Hadi, and Nick, if you notice, that was the top three mm. the short guys, managed to still look probably as good as they were going to look. Whereas like, you know, some of the other guys, they, they really like, like Rami, I think he really suffered from that. Yeah, it couldn't have been a coincidence that all of us, that they were all off. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I understand the appeal of having a bigger lineup, but at the same time, as a viewer, just purely as a fan, mm. I want to see. I just want to see the best. And and no disrespect, because if you get there, you get there. But I think that that's the thing. the The qualification system. I would like to see something a little different. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. I, to be honest, I've not put enough thought into it to really think, like, this is your solution, guys. But I do I do kind of wish in certain instances, I'm trying to think there was a bodybuilder that I thought should have got to the Olympia. Last year, I remember speaking to Ron Harris about it, and I said, oh, if there's a bodybuilder that would have got through to the Olympia and probably done okay, mm-hmm. um, because if the point system had been in place, I forget who it was. I wrote about it as well in one of my last MD columns. And... Um, you know, like, like say someone like Atonia, there's a perfect example. Say he gets second this week. Say he gets second at the New York Pro. You know, he's going to have to technically, th- theoretically, keep competing, try and beat Martin Fitzwater, whoever at D- Detroit, or you know, to try and qualify. You know, For so sure. you know, oh, Lauren's on. <laughs> okay, so I think that wraps it up. Honestly, Raphael's going to win. Eighty percent chance, ninety percent chance. Uh, I'd say ninety-five. 95. All right. I would go a little less. I'd say 80. Okay. Okay. Tony was good, Tony. I mean, he, I, I, let's not forget how good that guy is because he was yeah. one of the sh- For me, he was one of the shocks of the Olympia last year because I didn't expect him to come in looking so improved and, and do so well. But, you know, he fully deserved it. I think it'll be clear. But at the same time, he may get a first place vote or two, which I could still yeah. think it could be clear and, and it'd be close on the scorecard. I think that can two things can be true at the same time. Um, because at the end of the day, it's just one mind that just is represented on the scorecard. Um, True. so I, I still think Raphael's in the driver's seat for sure. Yeah. And it, it was very strategic. Cause I said to Neil, please tell me that Raphael's going to do the Arnold UK because of how close he was. I felt like to Samson and I felt like he didn't get that shot to be really, like I said, he should have been, I felt he should have been out with Hadi and, and Samson in that final call up. Cause for me, it wasn't, a massive gap between the top two and everybody else. I thought Raphael mm-hmm. was right up there. You know, he, I felt like in the side shots, he took Samson, you know, and that was, that's, that's a huge leap up, you know, for him. So um, I, I, they did, they, they, they did the strategic. Plus I think um, Raphael, I think his mum was sick or something. So I heard mm-hmm. something and he wanted to get back and he wanted to concentrate on that. So there was a couple of good reasons why there was no chance he was going to do the Arnold UK. So um yeah, so I'm just excited to see him get his qualification and um, and then get to the Olympia where I think he's going to be a lot higher than 10th this year. Too bad Carlos isn't here, but I'm sure you've heard he had to step out because uh, he had a death in the family. 
So maybe, you know, I think it's just a thing that he wanted to be around his family. Um, so it's not like he can't stay in that condition because, you know, I'm speaking purely as a fan, a fan perspective. He can do whatever he wants, whatever he needs for, for whatever he needs to do. But mm -hmm. maybe we can see him back in New York. That was his intention last year. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Plus, I think um, stress and the colitis are linked. And it's I can't say it. It is. I can't even say that word. Uh, ulcerative colitis. No, in, I said inextricably. I can't even say oh, that word. Oh. <laughs> they're, they're linked. You know, they're, they're stress and colitis. So yeah. any yeah. amount of stress is going to flare the colitis up, which is going to affect, affect his condition. For sure. So I think, like Raphael, he's got two good reasons to really, you know, smart thing to do was to step back and not do, you know, not do this show. So I just hope he's okay because I really like Carlos. I like his dad. I think they're really good people. And I think he's... Mm -hmm. He was such a sensation last year at the, the the Texas coming third, and it was so good to finally see him yeah. compete. And he's, you know, and he's, he is another, there's another guy like Vito that give him a couple of years, and potentially he could he's one of, he could be one of these top six. Olympians. Same strengths and same same problems, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awful, all, all, pretty abysmal back, and then uh, great from the front. So the legs. I mean, I remember oh, seeing him years. His legs and his arms. I mean, I've seen those. I saw those up close back in. Either 20, I want to see 2020 Arnold Classic because he's walking and he walked towards us and his legs like he's walking, he's waddling. Yeah. And he's even and he's even bigger now, you know? Yeah. Like the first time I saw Ronnie Coleman's arms at the 96 Grand Prix was wearing a Metrex t shirt and he was eating an apple and he had his bag and he just came out from backstage. And like compared to what he became, that was mini Ronnie. Yeah. I remember thinking, I've never seen Arnold. Like Clock was looking at Krizo the other week in um, Slovakia. Like I'd never seen arms. I didn't realize arms could physically be that yeah. big on a human. And this was before he supersized. This was like forty sure. pounds before, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, so Carlos. I mean, it's just you know to see him in the flesh now is is going to be like a t-shirt and short. You know, you you ain't going to be curling in his squat rack. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think that's it. We've covered a lot of things. We went on a little bit longer than I expected. I was like, oh, it'll be it'll be it'll be fine. You know, we'll, we'll do like an hour, and then you know. We just get carried away. That's I usually it, how it happens. No, I've things. really, enjoy, I've really enjoyed this, mate. You've been very engaging. I think, um, like I've, um, I've not, I've not really followed your stuff yet, you know, because you just popped up on my feed. But, um, mate, you've, you've done, you're doing a really good job, mate. You're very, you ask good questions. You know your stuff. You've got good knowledge. You've, you've researched. You're very objective. You speak. You're not afraid to sort of give your own opinion and, and object as well, like that, and kind of because I like to hear. We like to hear different points of view sometimes because then sometimes you might change my mind and, and vice versa, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh yeah, keep up the good work, mate. You're doing you're doing bloody fantastic. And it's nice to see this new generation coming through that aren't I can't well clickbait wankers, I call them. <laughs> you know, yeah. so you're you're clearly not one of them. So oh, you know, I appreciate you're, that. You're you're a good guy in my book, so keep doing what you're doing, mate. Yeah. Uh, if you had to guess, uh, how old do you think I am? Twelve. <laughs> no, no, um, That's it. That's it. No, no, no. <laughs> you're no, no, no. you're um you are I don't know 21 that's it that's 21 it. oh wow yes. when you, you yeah, just, no. i started when i was 18 19 you know yeah. doing the writing and photography and that's crazy you know, and, and all you have to do is be good at what you do to be taken seriously straight away you know because mm. people will watch this and instantly within a few minutes they'll see that you're professional you know you're not like i've seen it when these youtubers they'll get on in people to interview and they're trying to make them say stupid things because they're trying to make a soundbite video and sure. to try and go viral and stuff like that but it's if people are there like yourself that are there to, you know, give constructive, you know, interesting sort of um, debate and uh, critique and stuff like that, that's what the sport needs more of. Not these, um, not these trigely types, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's uh, yeah. Sorry. Quite literally, <laughs> quite literally banned from YouTube anyway, down to his well, face. Like, that's crazy. I mean, that's what he, happens. It is what happens. <laughs> but that's a, that's a whole other issue. And you to say be, what I said earlier, be, it's you're a debacle. Here for, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you're here for the athlete. You're not here to sort of, you know, exploit them. You know, and I think sure. that's 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 why we we need more people like yourself doing what you're doing. Mate. Uh, well, I appreciate that. Hopefully, I can have you on soon. Well, Anytime. You know. Yeah. Well, let me go to the toilet first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm busted here, mate. <laughs> All right. Well, 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 we'll cut it off there. Giles has to go to the bathroom. Um, and I I have things to do. We've been talking for like two and a half hours now. Oh, it's okay. I've gone now. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, all right. All right. Uh, we, we we can keep going. I reckon. But now I think we've talked talked about enough. I think even viewers of this, even fans of us, will uh, they've had enough by this point. Yeah, they had enough of me years ago, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, I appreciate you coming on. Anything uh, you, you're doing the tours? Anything you want to plug before before we sign off here? Well, just um, I mean, if you 
look on Giles underscore Tiger on my Instagram. I've got um, I've got one more tour being announced. I, I'm, I was hoping to get announced this week, but it's probably going to be next week by the time I, I get it all locked in. And then just like I said, we've I mean I've I can't even I can't even count up how many tours and live stream things I've got coming. So it's going to be a it's going to be a busy year, mate. So uh, I'm excited. Gotcha. All right. Well, I'll put your Instagram down in the description, and everything in the comments. So appreciate that's going to be it. I appreciate you for coming on. Appreciate you being on the podcast. We'll see you back soon.